On day one, I spawned in as Mr. Beast, the YouTuber famous for his big money and crazy challenges. But wait, I'm so small and I don't even have a beard. I'm not Mr. Beast, I'm Baby Beast. Before I could think about increasing my size or my fortune, a big mean bounty hunter came running out of some nearby woods. Uh oh, is that a bow and arrow? That's right, and I'm a dead shot with this thing too. I'm the toughest, nastiest bounty hunter around these parts, and you better start running, cause someone put a bounty on your head. A bounty? What does that mean? It means someone is gonna pay me the big bucks if I can capture you in 100 days. And trust me, it won't take 100 days, cause I'm the best there is. Before I could say anything else, he started firing at me. The bounty hunter was such a good shot, I had to run for my life deeper into the forest. Well, he just laughed at me. Escape this bounty hunter for 100 days? Boy, do I have my work cut out for me this time. On day two, I made my way into the closest forest I could find. I didn't stop, knowing that the bounty hunter might still be chasing me. Here in the trees, I have way more cover. It'll be harder for the bounty hunter to hit me with his arrows. Gosh, and I definitely don't want to get hit by those arrows. I only have three lousy hearts. I kept running, looking over my shoulder now and then to see if anybody was following me. Phew, it looks like I might have lost him. For now, anyway. That's when a huge gorilla charged out of the trees. He was buff and tough, as you'd probably expect from a gorilla. Sorry that I'm in your forest, Mr. Gorilla. I'd give you some money for it, but I'm not full Mr. Beast yet. It's an emergency, though. I'm being chased by a bounty hunter. The gorilla laughed. Yeah, I know you're being chased by a bounty hunter because he hired me to help him. If I take you to him, we're gonna split the bounty. Oh, come on, that's not fair. How can you sleep at night going after innocent people like this? Believe me, the bounty money will help. With that money, I'll be a gorillionaire. And with that, he attacked me, pounding me with his huge gorilla fists. I tried to fight back, but without any weapons and only my puny punches, I didn't leave a scratch on him. Huh, this really is like taking candy from a baby. Just when it seemed like all was lost, a donkey with a saddle came running at us out of the woods. Hop on my back if you want to live. So I hopped on the donkey's back and she carried me out of there. That was close, too close. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. On day three, the kind donkey who saved me took me back to her secret hideout deep in the woods. There, I met the donkey's friend, a pig who was also hiding out. This is Napoleon. He's the smartest pig I've ever met. Well, I don't know about the smartest, but I definitely know a thing or two. Wait, that's perfect. If you're super smart, then maybe you can help me with my quest. What quest is that? I'm being chased by the meanest, scariest bounty hunter in the world. And if he gets me in the next hundred days, I'm toast. They say the best defense is a good offense. If you don't want this bounty hunter fella to get to you, then you need to stay under the radar, get strong, and get him first. Now that's a cool idea. How would I start, Napoleon? You're gonna need tools, weapons, and a secret base for starters. And from there, the training will begin. Taking Napoleon's advice, Donkey and I set off further into the forest. The bounty hunter wouldn't get me over the next 100 days. I'd get him. On days four to five, Donkey and I decided to start gathering our first materials. The forest was full of trees, so it wouldn't be hard to find wood. Come on, Donkey, let's get ourselves some wooden blocks. It wasn't easy to punch down the trees, but with the help of Donkey, we'd soon broken down enough trees to make a crafting bench and some basic wooden tools. It's crafting time. I made myself a wooden pickaxe, perfect for a low-level player like me. But why settle for a low-level tool? You'll be able to mine, chop, and harvest even faster with stone tools. Donkey had a point. I used my wooden pickaxe to mine into the ground and collect some stone blocks. Then, with the help of my crafting bench, I created my first set of stone tools. But most importantly of all, I made myself my first formidable weapon, a super cool stone sword. Let's see that bounty hunter mess with me now. The next piece of advice Napoleon had given me was building a secret hideout. It couldn't be too obvious or the bounty hunter would find me easily. I picked a spot between some trees and started mining downwards. Underground would be the perfect spot for my base. I built some stairs and a place for Donkey and I to sleep underground with some torches to light the way. Hopefully the bounty hunter would never notice us here. But all this mining and crafting had worked up a hunger in me. That's when I noticed an apple on the ground. Oh, that's perfect. I picked up the apple and ate it. Then something amazing happened. I leveled up, growing into a slightly bigger Mr. Beast with four hearts now rather than three. This is awesome. Next, I need to start growing my bank account. On day six to eight, I decided to go exploring the plains again. 
The bounty hunter would probably never expect me to go back there. Still, I didn't want to push my luck. That's why I kept a low profile, crouching and trying to sneak around as much as I could. When you're up against a crazy bounty hunter, stealth is a good skill to practice. But my stealth came under fire when I saw an innocent young gazelle getting chased by a gang of spooky husks. I wanted to stay under the radar, but I could not help someone in trouble. Get away from her, you nasty husks! I pulled out my stone sword and charged in, ready to take them all on. But the battle wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. The husks attacked back, and I was fighting for my life. One of the husks attacked me and knocked off some of my hearts. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Beast. Fueled by my determination, I fought back, and soon all the husks were destroyed. Then the gazelle came in to thank me. Thank you, you saved me. I'll be forever in your debt. Don't mention it, gazelle. Is there anything else I could do to help? Well, I was wandering across the plains with my father, Papa Gazelle, when all these undead attacked. He told me to run, but he's still trapped back there. Can you help him? Of course, gazelle. Let's do it. On days 9 to 10, me and the young gazelle ran across the plains, looking for her father. He had to be around here somewhere. Look, that's him, over there. I turned and saw the last thing I wanted to see, Papa Gazelle being chased by a wither boss. He was firing explosive skulls and barely missing the poor gazelle. Uh-oh, withers are stronger than anything else I've faced. Please, we need to try. It's the only way to save my papa. I couldn't say no to that, so I once again took up my sword and ran towards the wither, trying to hide my fear. Pick on someone your own size, wither. So then, he started picking on me. The wither turned and fired a flaming skull that exploded on the ground next to me. I immediately knew there was no way I'd be able to win this fight at my current strength. I'll never be able to stop the bounty hunter if I get destroyed by a wither. Feeling ashamed of myself, I ran away. I retreated back to the young gazelle. Come back to my base with me, gazelle. We'll figure out a way to save your dad back there. On days 11 to 12, I came back to my base with gazelle, ready to make some upgrades and improvements. We went underground, and I mined an additional room for Gazelle to sleep in. But that's when I realized something important. An underground base is a great hideout, but if the bounty hunter finds us here, we're trapped. Uh -oh. I need to build an escape tunnel. So that's what I started building. The escape tunnel would be an ongoing project, though. I couldn't build one big enough for us all in just one day. During my day of mining and crafting, I paid another visit to Donkey and asked her what she knew about the bounty hunter and why he could have been after me. Well, it's probably got something to do with the prophecy. Prophecy? What prophecy? For the longest time, humans have kept the beasts down. You know, beasts like me and Napoleon and Gazelle. And humans like it that way. But prophecy tells of a human who will liberate the beasts from human control and deliver us all to freedom. The prophecies say that this man would be named Mr. Beast. Wait, Mr. Beast? I'm playing Mr. Beast. Maybe the prophecy is about me. That explains everything. The humans must think you're going to free all of the beasts. So they pooled their money together to hire the best bounty hunter in the world. The man who's known for being able to capture anybody. But if you can defeat him, you might be able to free the beasts. But I wasn't even strong enough to beat the wither yet. I needed to get a lot stronger before I could do that. In the meantime, I used my stone tools to start mining for iron underground. This would help make all my tools and weapons stronger. After a short time, I found a nice stash of iron and mined it up. And it isn't all about fighting, it's important to have food too. That's why I started adding extra chests into my underground base where I could store all the apples I collected from the forest. On days 13 to 15, I once again returned to Donkey and asked her for advice on how I could get stronger. Well, the best way to get stronger is by training. And the only way to train is to really test yourself. Which biomes have you visited? Now that you mention it, Donkey, I've only ever visited the forest and the plains. There's your problem. You're never gonna get stronger if you don't master every biome. Try to defeat a powerful enemy in the desert next. Great idea, Donkey! Before I headed to the desert biome, I needed to upgrade my equipment. I used the iron I'd mined to forge myself a new set of iron tools and some iron armor. And like Napoleon had said earlier, sometimes the best defense is a good offense, so I made myself a cool iron sword, too. I'm feeling stronger already! I left my base and crossed the forest until I found myself at the desert biome. Already, this place was way nastier than the other biomes. In my new armor, the heat was killing me. Speaking of killing me, that's also when the gorilla appeared from behind and hit me. Thought you could forget about your old pal the gorilla now, huh? That's a mistake you'll pay dearly for, my friend. What? How did you sneak up on me like that? 
I have my ways. Now it's time for me to take you down. I'm gonna get that bounty. The gorilla attacked me again, but this time I was stronger. His punches didn't do nearly as much damage against my iron armor. Now it's my turn, Gorillion Air. With a few hits from my iron sword, he was down and I'd won. That's when I saw he dropped a frontiersman cap. This lets the wearer move faster while sneaking. This must have been how he snuck up on me. I equipped the hat myself. This would be super helpful in avoiding that awful bounty hunter. Just then, I started to feel stronger and I gained another heart. Five hearts? That's more like it. I guess the desert training was worth it. Feeling better than before, I went back to my base and continued working on my escape tunnel. We made some good progress, but I wasn't going to feel much safer until it was complete. On days 16 to 19, I decided it was time to try getting rich by exploring an underground cavern. After all, you can't be Mr. Beast without getting rich. I bet there are some great precious gemstones down here. I used my iron pickaxe to easily mine through the stone all around me, setting up torches along the way so I could see where I was going. That's when suddenly, an elder skulk crawled toward me out of the darkness. <laughs> bet you never thought you'd see me down here. No offense, dude, but I don't even know who you are. I'm the Elder Skulk, and I'm working with the Bounty Hunter to bring you down. Jeez, why is everybody working with this meanie? I don't get it. Money, my boy. It makes the world go round. If you have enough money, you can do anything. Even pay you guys to leave me alone? Sure, but you're gonna need a lot of money to beat what all the humans are paying us to come after you. Now let's go. But I wasn't gonna go down without a fight. As the Elder Skull came running at me, I dodged his most powerful attack and took out my sword. It only took a few choice swings to take the monster down, but at least he'd given me a new idea. If I can't beat the bounty hunter, maybe I can buy him. On days 20 to 22, I made my way back to the desert for more training. I was also gathering materials for more upgrades to my gear. That's when I got attacked by a swarm of spiders, all trying to bite and sting me. You guys are so rude. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something here? It didn't take long for me to swat those nasty insects with my sword. Then they dropped a protection enchantment along with some string. This will make my armor even stronger. I applied the enchantment and felt my confidence rising too. That's when I remembered something important. Papa Gazelle, I can save him now. As quickly as I could, I ran across the desert and returned to the plains. I saw the same sad display. Poor Papa Gazelle getting chased around by the Wither Boss, who was still firing skulls at him. I've had all I can stand, and I can't stand it anymore. It's time to take this Wither Boss out. I ran in, sword blazing, dodging every flaming skull the Wither Boss blasted at me. With one carefully aimed strike, the Wither Boss was gone. You're free now, Papa Gazelle. Go home, and I'll send your kid back to you. Papa Gazelle ran off. I'd finally gotten strong enough to free him. Maybe I could save myself from the bounty hunter after all. How sweet. You saved the gazelle, but it won't save you. I turned and saw the bounty hunter aiming his bow at me. How did you find me? You weren't exactly being subtle, kid. And you should know by now, I'm the best there is. He fired an arrow and got me square in the chest. Even with my enchanted armor, he knocked off some of my hearts. I'd better get out of here before he shoots me again. I ran away, zigzagging to avoid more arrows. You can run, but you can't hide. No matter where you go, I will hunt you down. You'll never be Mr. Beast. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base, at least happy to have some good news for one of my friends. I found the young gazelle chilling out in the room I'd built for her. Gazelle, I defeated the Wither Boss and saved your dad. He's back at your house waiting for you. That's amazing, thank you. I can't wait to see him again. I'll never forget this. With the young gazelle gone back to her family home, it left me with a free room. A room I quickly started turning into an armory. The bounty hunter is a master of weapons, so I need to get just as good if I'm going to beat him. The main thing I needed was a ranged weapon, so I could fight back without getting too close. That's why I made myself a cool new crossbow. But it wasn't just the crossbow I built. I continued working on the escape tunnel. If my calculations were correct, by the time it was done, if the bounty hunter attacked my base, we could all escape all the way to the mountains. On days 27 to 31, I finished my escape tunnel and used it to travel all the way to the mountains. This will be the perfect way to get out of danger if I need to. Out of danger, you say? I turned to see that a snow leopard had somehow snuck up on me. I pointed my crossbow at him just to be safe. What are you doing here, snow leopard? Do you work with the bounty hunter? What? Heavens no. 
the bounty hunter aligned with the humans, just like the horde of Viking villagers who destroyed my home. They destroyed your home? That's terrible. Let me help you. How do I know you don't just side with the other humans? I'm not just any human, Snow Leopard. I'm Mr. Beast, the friend to all beasts. Go and stay at my base. You can take the escape tunnel. We'll make a plan to get back to your home later. Oh, thank you, kind stranger. In exchange for your generosity, I'll tell you the location of a cave with diamonds near here. The snow leopard marked it on my map and left back through the escape tunnel. I continued searching until I discovered the cave. And just like the snow leopard told me, there were some diamond deposits for me to mine in there. Jackpot! I'll be as rich as Mr. Beast in no time! I returned to my base, back through my escape tunnel. With all my new diamonds, I realized how drab my base looked. I crafted and added some banners and bookshelves to give it some ambiance. That's when the snow leopard approached me again. I sense a terrible disturbance. The Vikings who destroyed my home. I believe they've invaded the forest. We need to stop them at once. On days 32 to 35, Snow Leopard and I left the base and ventured back out into the forest, hoping to hunt down the Viking villagers who had destroyed his home in the mountains. Look, there they are. I'd recognize them anywhere. I looked straight ahead and saw what the Snow Leopard had seen. A group of armed Viking villagers surrounding the secret hideout of Napoleon the Pig. He was doing his best to reason with them. I don't want any trouble, fellas. I swear, I'm just a humble pig. Leave me be. But they weren't listening. Uh -oh. The Viking villagers were about to attack Napoleon. I pulled out my crossbow and started blasting, hoping to distract them. Instead, it all broke out into chaos. Some of the Viking villagers ran towards me. Bird ran forward to meet and fight them. But as much as I tried to fire more crossbow bolts at the Viking villagers running for Napoleon, I was already too late. They destroyed him and burned down his hideout. Napoleon, no! This unlocked the secret rage of me and Snow Leopard. We charged in, him using his claws and teeth, and me pulling out my sword. It didn't take long for us to defeat the remaining Viking villagers. I'm so sorry about your friend. Perhaps humans and beasts can never live in harmony. On days 36 to 39, I needed a change of scenery to help me process Napoleon's death. I decided to make my way to the beach, sneaking all the way to make sure that the bounty hunter didn't come after me when I was most vulnerable. That's exactly the kind of mean move he'd go for. But while I was exploring the beach, I found another beast hanging around, a boar. He looked like he needed some help, and because he reminded me of Napoleon, I decided I'd do whatever I needed to. What's up, Mr. Boar? Do you have a problem that a Mr. Beast could help with? I was fishing for some magic yellow fish in the nearby ocean, but a small group of aggressive giant lobsters stopped me. I can take care of them, no problem at all. I found my way to the boar's fishing spot and saw the lobsters skittering around, snipping their big red claws. But they were no match for my crossbow. I pulled it out and with a few well-placed shots, all the lobsters were gone. It felt good to be able to help someone after I'd had such a bad day. I went back to the boar and told him the good news. In return, he told me something interesting. The bounty hunter had a weakness. His powers were reduced in the dark. Thanks for the tip, Mr. Boar. That'll probably come in real handy. On days 40 to 43, I returned to my base and continued to spruce it up. I installed lanterns down the length of the escape tunnel just to make it easier to use. That's when Donkey approached me with a request. I heard about some horse friends of mine that escaped from a human stable. Would you mind building some extra rooms for them down here so they have somewhere to be? Of course, Donkey. That'll be no problem at all. I mined a few extra rooms and widened the entrance to the secret base so we could fit some of Donkey's new horse friends inside. The more the merrier. While the horses filed in, Snow Leopard came into my room and shared some vital information. My Snow Leopard senses have been speaking to me again. There is an abandoned mine deep in the forest that I visited once. I have a feeling you may find something you're looking for there. Just be warned, it may be looking for you too. On days 44 to 49, I made my way deep into the forest in the dead of night. I started traveling at night more often since the boar told me the bounty hunter's weakness. Soon enough, I'm gonna be strong enough to beat you, bounty hunter. Eventually, I found the abandoned mine that the snow leopard had told me about and crept inside. It was dark and spooky in the abandoned mine, so I used some torches to light the way. However, the second the torches were in place, I heard something coming towards me. Hey, who goes there? I was lucky and dodged in time as an arrow flew towards me and embedded itself in the wall next to me. An arrow that could have only belonged to one person I knew, the bounty hunter. Hello again, you've fallen right into my trap. The bounty hunter stepped out of the darkness. 
I know about the prophecy, bounty hunter. I know why the humans paid you. They know I'm Mr. Beast, and they hate the beasts, so they want to stay in control of them. The bounty hunter laughed. <laughs> they don't hate the beasts. They're jealous of the beasts. They were born with brains, but the beasts were born with natural strength and instincts. What they really want is to harness the beast, produce something with the mind of a human, and the strength of a beast. Such a thing is impossible, bounty hunter! Impossible? You fool, it's already happened! Then, another thing charged out of the dark towards me! A creature I'd never seen before! A huge villager beast! A fusion of human and beast! And it was ready to fight me! Uh -oh. Good luck, you're gonna need it! And with that, the bounty hunter disappeared, leaving only me and the villager beast. It was time to fight! On days 50 to 53, the villager beast ran at me, moving faster than I'd ever seen a human move before. I fired at him with the crossbow, hitting him with multiple arrows, but it didn't even seem to hurt or slow him down. The villager beast rammed into me and knocked me back against the wall, almost stunning me. I pulled out my sword and tried to fight back. It was shockingly fast and strong, managing to deflect or simply ignore most of my attacks. In the end, it took all the strength I had to finally defeat this unnatural monster. Jeez, I hope I never have to fight one of those horrible things again. When the villager beast died, it left a book marked research notes on the ground. It seemed to have been written by some kind of evil scientist, probably the one who'd first made this monster. The tests are going well, but the subject is still far too weak. I need the bounty hunter to capture even stronger creatures if I'm to master the fusion and create the ultimate combination of human and beast. The time will soon come when I have perfected the process, and then nothing will stop us! Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. On days 54 to 57, I climbed out of the abandoned mine, shaken by my fight with the villager beast. It seemed that the plans the bounty hunter was involved with were so much worse than I thought. I wanted to go back to my base and warn the others, but when I left the mine, Sven the Viking, one of the strongest Viking warriors of all, was waiting for me, sword at the ready! Well, 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 you survived. That's impressive. The villager beast is a powerful creature, but my instructions are clear. The bounty hunter told me to destroy you if you survived and escaped, so I guess that's what's gonna happen now. Sorry! I didn't have the time or patience to listen to Sven's babbling, so I fired at him with my crossbow. Once, twice, three times! But somehow, every time, he dodged. Uh -oh. Can't we just talk this out, man? I pulled out my sword, and Sven kept attacking me. He was a strong fighter, but I'd beaten the villager beast, so he didn't seem that challenging in comparison. Once he was gone, he dropped an interesting item on the ground. Some outback leggings, which massively increase your ability to dodge projectiles. So that's how he kept dodging my crossbow bolts. I better take these for myself. They'll probably come in handy for the next time I face the bounty hunter. After I equipped the outback leggings, I made my way back to the base. I met with the snow leopard again, told him about all the crazy things that had happened, and showed him the book that I collected from the villager beast. This is troubling. These writings, they seem to be the work of the plague doctor, a mad scientist who had theories about fusing humans and beasts to create the ultimate creatures. I thought he was gone, but he seemingly returned. This means all of us are in danger. It's worse than I possibly could have thought. On days 58 to 62, after receiving the disturbing news from Snow Leopard about the Plague Doctor, I decided to work on improving and upgrading the base however I could. First came the escape tunnel. I built a track along the floor of the cave so a minecart could be installed. This would make it a lot easier and faster to get from one end to another. I think I'll give it a spin right now. Woohoo! I took the minecart down to the other end of the escape tunnel and ventured out into the mountain biome again. I explored the diamond cave that Snow Leopard had shown me and mined even more diamonds. I used the escape tunnel and the minecart once again to take these back to my base where I built my first pieces of diamond gear, a diamond chest plate, and an awesome diamond sword. I ended the four days by building additional levels and rooms to my underground base in case we needed to help more beasts hide from the bounty hunter and the evil plague doctor. There's only one way out of this, and it's with all of us working together. On day 63 to day 66, Donkey came up to me with a clever idea. Humans have been known to use boats to travel along the river in groups. Maybe if you follow the river along, you might be able to find one of their settlements, or even find your way to the bounty hunter's new lair. 
Good idea, donkey. I'll wait until nightfall. Then the bounty hunter will never see me coming. So that's exactly what happened. I waited until nightfall. Then I made my way out through the forest until I found the river. Then I just followed the river along. Suddenly, I got a spooky feeling, like something was waiting nearby, and turned to see a night apparition floating right behind me. I immediately pointed my crossbow at him, not wanting to take any chances. Wait, wait, I'm friendly. I just need your help. Oh, really? What's going on? I'm sorry for pointing my crossbow at you, by the way. I've had kind of a rough month. It's okay, I understand. We're all a little jumpy with the bounty hunter's men hanging around. Wait, the bounty hunter's men? Do you know where I can find them? Of course. They chased me out of my home in a cave nearby. I think they were looking for precious gemstones. Then let's go fight them. I need some answers before it's too late. Count me in. So we ran to the nearest cave, ready for battle. On day 67 to 70, the night apparition and I ran into the cave he'd once called his home. The henchmen of the bounty hunter, three gold warriors, were already inside, mining at the walls with iron pickaxes. What are you goofballs doing? The three gold warriors suddenly turned to me and the night apparition and pulled out iron swords. We're under strict orders from the bounty hunter to mine as many diamonds as possible. If you interfere, we will destroy you. Why does the bounty hunter need so many diamonds? Is he really just that greedy? No, he and his employer want all of their soldiers to have diamond swords. We'll all be stronger that way. Oh, diamond swords like this? I pulled out my diamond sword and charged in. The gold warriors didn't hesitate to fight back. They were strong and well-trained. But thankfully, I wasn't alone in this fight. The night apparition floated around the cave, distracting the gold warriors long enough for me to get the edge. Soon enough, I defeated all three with my trusty diamond blade. Thanks for the assist, night apparition. Thank you for getting my home back. Feel free to take any of the diamonds those guys left behind. Don't mind if I do. I mined the remaining diamonds and prepared to leave when the night apparition said one more thing to me. I heard the golden warriors murmur something about coming from the Badlands when they first chased me out. I figured that might be useful information for you. On day 71 to 74, I began following up on the lead that the night apparition had given me. If what the gold warriors said was true, I might have been able to find something I wanted there. Yes. And if what you want is more crazy Minecraft adventures like this one, search for more Zozo videos by searching Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. By the time I arrived at the Badlands, the only structure I could see was a busted down looking camp. But that wasn't all. The bounty hunter was waiting for me. I'm impressed, you shouldn't have survived. I just started firing arrows at him from my crossbow, not even letting him finish his sentence. He somehow managed to dodge every single one. Nice shot. Now it's my turn. He pulled out his bow and fired a few arrows at me. But now I had the Outback leggings on my side. With speed that impressed even him, I managed to dodge all of his arrows too. That all you got, bounty hunter? You're dealing with beast mode, Mr. Beast here. I pulled out my sword and ran at him. He just stood there, not even trying to dodge. But when I got close, he pulled out his close-ranged weapon, a battle axe. With one strike, he sent me skidding back across the Badlands, hitting me down to half a heart. Guess you're not as strong as you think you are. What if five days left? You're gonna be mine before the time runs out. Injured and surprised, I did the only thing I could, run off. I'd finish this another day. On day 75 to 78, I returned across the forest to my base. I built myself an extra room just for sitting around and relaxing because after everything I'd experienced, I really needed to take a load off. That's when the snow leopard approached me, carrying a book. As you may have noticed, I sometimes dabble in a little bit of magic. I'm able to sense things other people can't. It's true, that is something I've noticed about you. Well, I've taken my skills in magic and use it to create this book. If you read it, you will finally unlock your true potential, and it will help you on your next steps to becoming the hero you were always meant to be. Wow, thank you, Snow Leopard. I'm honored. I took up the book and finally read it. I felt the change immediately, getting bigger, stronger, and getting an impressive 10 hearts. But more than that, I took a look into my inventory and found that it was stuffed with money. Snow Leopard, you did it! I'm finally Mr. Beast! On day 79 to 84, I went out to the desert to test out my new Mr. Beast powers. I soon encountered one of the most dangerous creatures in the desert, the sand and wind spirit known as the Guster. These things really packed a punch, but thankfully, so did I. 
I ran in with my diamond sword, feeling no fear, and destroyed the guster in a single strike. Whoa, I really am strong now. My strength caught the attention of a nearby roadrunner who wanted to see if I was as fast as I was strong. He challenged me to a few races. You're on, roadrunner. We ran up and down a stretch of the desert together. I was faster than I expected, but he was way, way faster than that. It seemed that no matter how fast I went, the roadrunner was always just a little bit faster. But he still thought I gave him a good race, so when the race was over, he gave me a potion as a gift. A speed potion. Wow. Thanks, roadrunner. Now I can run twice as fast. On days 85 to 89, I put my new speed to good use, running all the way back to my base, only to find that its secret entrance had been discovered, and it was being attacked by a group of villager beasts, just like the one that had attacked me in the abandoned mine. You guys aren't meant to be here. Wait, what about my friends? Thankfully, my hard work earlier had paid off. They'd all escaped through the minecart escape tunnel before the villager beasts could get to them. But those monsters were still destroying my base. I pulled out my diamond sword and ran to fight them. With my new strength and skill, the first one I attacked only took a few hits to defeat, and the rest started running. I'm not letting you guys get away this time. I started chasing them into the forest, but I was interrupted when a tiny rabbit asked for my help finding his lost carrot. Okay, I'll help you find the carrot. Just know this really isn't a good time. While the villager beast ran away, I searched around until I found the rabbit's carrot behind a tree. I grabbed it and gave it back to him before continuing to chase the villager beasts into the distance. I was once again extremely thankful for my roadrunner speed. On days 90 to 94, the chase continued until I passed from the forest into the jungle. It was so hot and humid in there, I couldn't help but slow down a little. But this turned out to be exactly what the bad guys had planned. The villager beasts had just been there to lure me to the plague doctor's most dangerous creation yet, the mutant zombie. Oh no, that thing is huge. I pulled out my crossbow and started blasting it as it ran towards me, but it still had no effect. All I could do was pull out my diamond sword and face it one-on-one. -on -one. Time for an epic battle of mutant versus beast. On days 95 to 97, the mutant zombie charged me like a raging bull. I was able to dodge it just in time and stab it in the side with my diamond sword, but it barely seemed to phase it. Already, the mutant zombie turned and started attacking me again. Each one of its punches damaged me until I was low on hearts. I needed to do something, quickly. Hey, mutant zombie, how would you like some cold hard cash? In true Mr. Beast style, I threw some of my vast collection of money onto the ground. The mutant zombie was immediately distracted and ran towards the cash. I guess the Elder Skulk was right. Money really does make the world go around sometimes. While he was distracted, I took advantage of my roadrunner speed and struck the mutant zombie again and again with all of my might until finally it fell and was defeated. The mutant zombie only dropped one thing, a map with exact directions to the Plague Doctor's laboratory where I'd find him and the bounty hunter. Three days left, it's time to end this. On day 98, I made my way back to my base to make the final preparations for my assault on the Plague Doctor's lab. As I prepared, my friends from around the base came to offer me some help or words of encouragement. First came the horses. Thanks for giving us a place to stay. You're a real beast. Next came the snow leopard. You can do this. The prophecy has all been true up to this point. You will defeat the bounty hunter, destroy the plague doctor, and liberate the beasts. And finally, my oldest friend, the donkey. I made you something special to bring with you, firework bolts. These will really make your crossbow pack a punch. With everything said and done, it was time to make my way to the laboratory and save the day. On day 99, I crossed the forest, following the directions on the map left by the mutant zombie. On the way there, I passed a turtle, minding his own business in the forest. Good luck, I believe in ya. Thanks, turtle. I'm sure it'll be turtly fine in the end. Okay, okay, don't push it. I kept walking, remaining stealthy, until I saw the plague doctor's laboratory in the distance. But this wouldn't be as easy as I thought. The building was surrounded by villager beasts. I loaded up one of my new firework rounds into my crossbow and prepared to fire. But if I missed my shot, would it lead the other one straight to me? I might have miscalculated here. That's when an unexpected old friend turned up. It was the young gazelle who I'd saved months ago. She ran past the front of the laboratory, catching the attention of the villager beasts. They started chasing her, running away from the entrance of the laboratory. Finally, my chance! Using my roadrunner speed, I ran straight for the door. On day 100, I entered the laboratory, crossbow loaded and ready to fire. 
The laboratory was eerie. It was filled with cells containing more villager beasts, who must have been the failed experiments of the Plague Doctor. Do you like what you see, young man? I turned and saw the Plague Doctor, and of course, the Bounty Hunter waiting for me. All these wonderful creations, but they're flawed, aren't they? But you can't make a delicious meal without the best quality ingredients. And for a perfect human-beast hybrid, I need the ideal subject. Once my bounty hunter has defeated you, you will be that subject. It's why I put that bounty on you in the first place. Day 100. You made it all the way. I hope that eases the pain of being defeated. Not a chance, bounty hunter. I'm not just some pesky human. I'm Mr. Beast. The bounty hunter pulled out his bow and prepared to shoot, but I was quicker than he was. I fired a firework bolt at him, but I didn't wait up. I pulled out my diamond sword and ran at him, ready to land a lethal blow. Bounty hunter, destroy! The bounty hunter immediately pulled out his battle axe and parried the blow from my diamond sword. He was a formidable opponent. You've gotten strong. I'm impressed. We clashed weapons while the plague doctor watched. I needed to keep absolute focus in order to dodge or block every attack he threw at me. I was just waiting for a window. At the perfect moment, I pulled out my crossbow and fired one of the firework bolts at close range right into the bounty hunter's chest. He was finally defeated. You've won. Well done. Now finish me off. What? No, I'm not gonna finish you off. I'm going to hire you. Just like Mr. Beast, I laid out stacks of money in front of him, even more than the bounty that the Plague Doctor had put on me. Wow, that's a lot of money. What would you like for me to do, boss? I want you to destroy this entire lab, take the Plague Doctor to jail, and retire. I'll make it happen, boss. What? You can't do that! No! No! And with the bounty hunter now doing my job for me, I decided to do the most sensible thing. Go back to my base and hang out with my friends. On day one, I spawned in as Athmau, ready to begin my latest Minecraft adventure. And wow, look, I've got five hearts. It must be because Athmau is so good at making friends. But wait, there was nobody else around me in the forest. That didn't seem right. Athmau always has her friends, especially her best friend, Ian. I started looking around to see if I could find him. Ian, can you hear me, Ian? I don't like hanging out in this creepy forest alone. But I wasn't alone. Suddenly, a huge humbaba came running out of the trees towards me. Are you calling for Ian? Oh, that annoying little brat has given me enough trouble already. If you're a friend of his, I'm gonna need to kidnap you too. So that's what happened to Ian. He always knew how to make a bad first impression. I turned and ran away from the forest. There was no way I could fight that big humbaba unarmed. Get back here, you little twerp. There will be no escape once I reach my full power. That didn't sound good. I kept running until I couldn't see the humbaba anymore and stopped to catch my breath after the chase. So he kidnapped Ian. I need to get him back. I really don't like that thing the humbaba said about reaching his full power. But I didn't have time to think about it. Suddenly, Endermen were coming out of the trees all around me, grasping for me with their long, spooky arms. Uh-oh, gotta go. I ran off again until there were no Endermen to be seen. I hid underneath a big tree to get some sleep in secret. It's harder to make friends in this world than I thought. On day two, I woke up with a sore back. Sleeping on the ground under a tree isn't that comfortable. I needed to make myself a base. But first, I needed to get myself some materials. I started breaking down a tree with my bare hands to get the material for a crafting table. Ow, my hands are gonna be sore after that one. I built a crafting table and used that to craft my first set of tools. A wooden pickaxe, a wooden axe, and of course, a wooden sword. Now it's base building time. But there wasn't much space in the forest, so I headed out into the plains to start building my base on a wide, even plain. I admired the plains from my new balcony. Nothing can sneak up on me here. That's when I saw a bunch of freaky little creatures crawling towards my base. Are those enderiophages? That doesn't make sense. What are they doing outside of the end? Either way, I needed to get them out of here to finish building my base. I went outside, pulled out my sword, and started attacking them, being careful not to let them attack me. If an enderiophage attacks you, you get ender flu, and nobody wants that. Get out of here, you nasty little viruses. I kept attacking them until there were no more left and stay out. I went back in to continue working on my base. The first room I finished was my sleeping quarters, complete with a nice, comfy bed. This sure beats sleeping under a tree. 
On day three, I woke up feeling well rested and decided to continue expanding my base. I left the plains and walked back into the forest to gather more material with my new tools. After all, I needed to build a room for Ian after I rescue him from the Humbaba. On the way through the forest, I discovered an opening into a cave and decided to explore. Who knows what treasures I might find in there? But as I got deeper and deeper into that cold, dark cave, I realized treasure wasn't the only thing inside. Suddenly, an armed Mimikube snuck up behind me. Before I could even react, it hit me with its mimic sword, taking out a good chunk of my health. Get away from me, you lousy slime! I'm just trying to gather some supplies! But it didn't listen! It just kept attacking me! My sword was like a toy against it! Whatever adventurer it copied a shield from was too strong! For a minute there, I thought I was a goner! Until a friendly Chocobo came running out of the cave towards me! Hop on my back, kid! It isn't safe in here! Thanks! That's an offer I can't refuse! I jumped onto the Chocobo's back and rode her out of the cave, leaving the Mimikube behind us in the dark. Yes. We ran until we reached my base, where I finally dismounted off of the Chocobo. Thanks for the save, Chocobo. I'm Zozo. What's your name? I'm Coco. Huh. Guess our names are kind of similar. You did a great job saving us from that Mimikube. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have survived without you. The Mimikubes are just the beginning of it. Haven't you noticed all of the Ender creatures that have been bothering everyone around here? It's all Estragon the Humbaba's fault. Wait, the Humbaba? I think we should stick together. That's the guy who kidnapped my friend. On days four to five, I invited Coco the Chocobo into my base. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Nice place. Where will I sleep? That's when I realized he wouldn't really fit through the door. Well, where do you want to sleep? Personally, I've always felt a little safer underground. Is that doable? You betcha, Coco. I mined a space underground in my little base and built Coco a cozy underground room to sleep in. By the time we were done, it was nighttime and we were exhausted. It feels so nice to have a friend staying at my base with me too. But we didn't get to cool off for long. We heard the sound of zombies moaning outside. Jeez, we can't catch a break, can we? You hang back this time, Coco. You've already saved my bum once today. Now it's my turn to help you out. I climbed up the stairs and pulled out my sword. It may be wooden, but I could still outwit a bunch of zombies, even at my lower power level. I ran in, taking advantage of my speed to lure the zombie horde away from my base. That'd keep Coco safe. Now it's time to tango, you undead fiends. Once I was far enough away, I started picking them off one by one, defeating each one quickly before the rest could gang up on me. You know that age-old rule, never get surrounded by zombies. This'll teach you to invade my base. It's just rude, you know? I noticed that one of them dropped an enchanted book on the ground. I ran in and picked it up right away. Oh, wow, protection level four. This will improve the strength of my armor. That's perfect. On day six to eight, I decided to build a chicken farm on my base so I could collect the eggs and make myself some nice meals. Once the new section of the base was built, I went out into the jungle to find some wild chickens roaming free. Here, little chickens, I'll put up some fences and make you some nests. While I was there, I collected a few apples from the trees, too. Munch, munch, munch. Back to full hearts. Nice. And just in time, too, because I saw a strag in the humbubba coming towards me through the trees. It was carrying a bow with flaming arrows. We meet again, Zozo. You're a long way from your base. Estragon, I know your name now. What did you do with my friend Ian? Ian, Ian, Ian. I'm sick of hearing that name. Almost as sick as I am of keeping him as a hostage. But it'll all be worth it when it's time for the sacrifice. What? Sacrifice? What are you going to do to my friend? I've told you too much already, Zozo. Now it's time for you to run. If you want to survive, that is. He started shooting fireballs at me, and all I could do was run away. There was no way I could face him with just a wooden sword. Run, Zozo, run! It doesn't matter. I'll catch you in the end, no matter what. He kept firing more fireballs as I kept running. There were so many I could barely dodge them all. I just kept ducking and weaving between the trees. They were my only protection. Why can't you just leave me alone? I can't have you getting in the way of my plans, Zozo. I won't risk it. Luckily, I was still faster than he was. I was able to keep running until I passed through a gap too small for him. By the time he could make it around, I had hidden behind a tree. You can't hide forever, Zozo. Then he angrily spat fire all over. 
I didn't feel safe until I saw him fade into the distance, looking for me. I'm gonna need to get so much stronger before I can beat that guy. I hope you're safe out there, Ian. On days 9 to 10, I was hanging out with Coco, thinking about how to pass the time while I searched for Ian and figured out Humbaba's evil plan. Coco had a pretty bright idea about that. How about you build a statue, Zozo? That's a great way to pass the time, and it'll help inspire you to complete your mission. Great idea, Coco. I'm so glad I have you around to help me out. But what would the statue be? It has to be something Ian would love. I was sitting on the balcony, thinking of what exactly to build. Oh wait, I know! I'd build a statue of Ian! He'd love to have a big statue of himself to look at! I ventured out to the plains, where I started mining some more materials. This would help me build my statue and improve my base. I went back to the base and started building the statue's foundation. Heck yeah, that's a good start. I also decided it was time to furnish my home a bit more. I needed somewhere to chill out and maybe read. Oh, I know, I'll build myself a library. That will be the perfect place to study and relax. Yes. I built myself a nice cozy library with bookshelves, chairs, and a fireplace. Now this is the way to live. On days 11 to 12, I was exploring a cave, searching for more materials, when suddenly an ancient spirit villager appeared right in front of me. Oh no, a ghost! Be not afraid, Zozo. How do you know my name? I know many things. As an ancient spirit, it is my duty to guide heroes and warriors who are pure of heart to their destiny. I can sense that you have a mission, Zozo. I can give you the answers, but you must ask the right questions. Well, a humbaba named Estragon kidnapped my best friend Ian, and I think he's up to something bad. Can you tell me everything you know about him? Mm -hmm. Yes, Estragon the Humbaba. There is a great darkness in that creature's heart. He started out like any other Humbaba, living in the desert plains with his family. But like many evil men, Estragon wasn't satisfied with what he had, with the love of his friends and family. He always lusted for power, to gain control over others. His quest to become a more powerful being led him to the end. A realm even darker and further from the overworld than the nether. He knew that the forces of the end would give him power he only dreamed of, but it exacted a terrible price in return. A sacrifice. If he wanted the power of the end, he would need to forsake the overworld and help the Endermen and Endurophages take it over and make it their own. He gains power to perform this ritual through sacrifice. I would wager that this is his intention with your friend, Ian. What? That's even worse than I thought. Uh -oh. I need to get stronger and defeat this guy before he can hurt anyone else. From days 13 to 15, I returned to the cave where I first met Coco the Chocobo. If I wanted to get strong enough to defeat Estragon the Humbaba, I needed to at least be strong enough to defeat that Mimikyu. As I got deeper into the cave, I saw it was waiting for me on top of a stalagmite. Clearly he had gotten some flair for the dramatic. As it hopped down towards me, I dodged and went for his back, trying to hit him where he couldn't block with his shield. He took a lot of hits from my wooden sword, but eventually I did manage to defeat it with a good swing to the back. The fight made a difference, because I could feel myself leveling up. I went from 5 to 8 hearts, got twice as strong, and gained a new ability, Disguise. Aphmau is great at fitting in, so I could now convince some lower level mob groups that I'm one of them. Just as long as I don't act too out of character. This will probably come in handy later. After that, I mined some stone and left the cave. All this will help me rescue Ian and stop Estragon someday. On days 16 to 19, I built myself a crafting room so I could make better gear. I used my crafting table and the stone I'd collected to make myself a new set of gear. A stone sword, a stone pickaxe, and a stone axe. We've just entered the stone age, baby! I realized I needed more materials for base building and crafting. That's why I started exploring an underground cavern near my base. The deeper I got into the cavern, the more I noticed how cold it had gotten. Even cooler than you'd usually expect for an underground cavern. That's when I noticed an ice man standing deeper into the cavern, waiting for any intruders to enter. He was walking towards me. I needed to think fast. Now is probably a good time to try out my new disguise ability. As the ice man approached me, I switched into my ice man disguise. Hey, who goes there? 
Hey, uh, it's me, fellow Iceman. So nice to see another one of my cold bros down here. Oh, yeah, I guess it is nice to see another Iceman down here. It looks like my disguise worked. Well, what can I do you for, fellow Iceman? You mind if I mine some materials? I need to upgrade my equipment. Sure thing, bud. Be my guest. My new disguise ability was already coming in handy. Yes. With the Iceman's approval, I mined some extra stone and made my way back to my base. On days 20 to 22, I woke up to Coco the Chocobo outside the door to my bedroom, frantically calling for me. Zozo! Zozo! It's an emergency! Huh? What's wrong, Coco? Astragon the Humbaba is right outside. I think he's here to see you. Uh-oh, I better get dressed and go see him then. I grabbed my equipment and ran out of the base. I saw Estragon the Humbaba standing there, waiting for me. Meet again, Zozo. Our last meeting was cut tragically short. If I recall correctly, you ran away like a coward. Will you run away now? I'm through running away. I'm ready to take you on, Estragon. Are you brave enough to fight me directly? Gladly. Estragon readied his claws and ran at me. We dueled, managing to dodge or parry most of each other's blows. Impressive. You've gotten a lot stronger since we last fought. Thanks for providing the encouragement. As we kept fighting, I managed to hold my own, but I was getting tired. Lucky for me, it seemed like Estragon was getting tired too. You've proven yourself, Zozo, but this isn't even my final form. The next time we fight, it'll be the end of you. Mark my words. And with that, he ran off, leaving us on a draw. But the next time I would meet him, I finally believed it might be my turn to take home the victory. When I'm done with you, Estragon, the only end you'll need to worry about is your own. On days 23 to 26, I explored an underground cavern, hoping to find some interesting loot. Using torches I placed along the wall to light my way, I walked deeper and deeper into the belly of the cavern. Along the way, I saw a family of spiders skittering along the stone. I really didn't feel like fighting these guys, so I hid in the shadows and watched them pass. Ugh, spiders always give me the creeps! Once the spiders were gone, I kept creeping into the cavern. I could just feel I was getting closer to something worthwhile. Hey, what's that? That's when I discovered an old chest hidden among the rocks. I opened it and found a potion of healing inside. Wow. This will help me regain two hearts. I better keep this for when I really need it. And if you want more Zozo videos when you really need them, search Z-O-Z-O -Z -O in your search bar and you'll be able to find all my Minecraft adventures. On days 27 to 31, Coco brought me some materials to get started on the statue and I quickly got to work on it, knowing that it would help to motivate me to take on Estragon and rescue Ian. This is looking rad, but I can't help but feel like it's missing something. I realized pretty quickly that the statue needed some more colors to really bring it to the next level. I made my way over to a nearby desert where I found some abandoned sheep in a pen. Their wool is exactly what we need for the statue. As soon as I tried to get closer, however, a gang of husks appeared from behind the sands. It was too late to use my disguise skill. They'd already seen me, and now I was in trouble. I'm guessing you guys don't want to just talk this one out. Spoiler alert, they didn't. I pulled out my stone sword and started fighting off the gang of angry husks. There were plenty of them, but I was a lot stronger than I used to be. I bet you wished you'd just talked it out with me now, huh? Some husks with bows were hiding on top of a sand dune, firing arrows at me. But they weren't as good a shot as Estragon, so I was able to dodge their arrows and run at them. Come on, guys, you can do better than that. I swung my sword again and again and again, never letting up. By the time I was done, those ancient bad guys were done, and I was free to explore the pen. I found a big stash of wool in a nearby chest. Since I had what I needed, I set the sheep free. Enjoy your freedom. With that done, I made my way back to my base to continue work on the statue. On days 32 to 35, I decided I needed a change of scenery, so I left my base and ventured down to the swamp to see if there were any interesting materials to collect. Mmm, it's got that fresh swamp smell. But I didn't find any interesting materials. Instead, I found a swarm of monstrous swamp leeches, and I really didn't want them to get too close to me. I think I might be allergic to leeches, especially giant monster leeches. As I tried to run away, I fell into the bog and found even more monstrous swamp leeches slithering through the water towards me. I needed to get out of here. I climbed out of the water and started running as fast as I could as the leeches started slithering up onto the ground behind me. Those monsters must be really hungry. 
But I don't want to be on the menu, you nasty leeches. I pulled out my sword, and I was able to fight a few of them off. But every time I took out a few of them, more crawled out of the water. I was on their turf now. Okay, okay, I'm leaving. Just please stop trying to eat me. After running for a while, I finally managed to escape all the hungry leeches. I stopped for a minute to catch my breath, and that's when the iron chicken ran out to meet me. Please, kind stranger, I need your help. Of course, tell me what's happening. My chicken friend was kidnapped and dragged away into a tomb. But it's too heavily guarded for me to go and get her back myself. Will you help me do it? I will. My friend got kidnapped too, so I know exactly how you feel. I'll get right on it. On days 36 to 39, I followed some instructions the Iron Chicken gave me until I found my way over to the ancient tomb. Of course they'd be hiding the kidnapped chicken in the creepiest place possible. Duh. Getting in wouldn't be easy. I could see a powerful looking stone monster guarding the gate. And I had no idea what other enemies or traps were waiting for me inside. I needed to think of a way to approach this tactically. Wait, I have an idea. The stone monster hadn't seen me yet, so I could use my disguise skill to infiltrate the building without needing to fight the stone monster. Once I was inside, I could try to find the chicken and sneak back out. It'd be a flawless plan and nobody would need to get hurt. That's the Athmau way. What could possibly go wrong? Days 40 to 43, I put my plan into action. I used my disguise ability to take on the form of a stone monster and approach the stone monster guarding the entrance to the ancient tomb. Hey there, fellow stone monster. How's it going? Do I know you? Well, we're both stone monsters, aren't we? What's up? You guarding the tomb? Can I go in? Look, buddy, this is a security job. I don't let anyone into this tomb unless I know them. So, who are you? I feel like I definitely know you from somewhere. Hmm. Are you a friend of my brother, Michael? Yes, that's it. Some would say I'm his best friend. Me and Mikey go way back. So, you mind if I enter the tomb? Yeah, don't. I don't have a brother. I'm taking you down. My disguise was foiled. The stone monster ran towards me, and I used my speed and agility to dodge around him and run into the ancient tomb. Don't worry, chicken. I'm coming for you. I ran into the tomb. It was a cold, dark passageway where I could barely see in front of my face. Put up a couple torches along the walls just so I could find my way around. That's when I found a potion of night vision laying around on the floor of the tomb. This is perfect, just what I needed. I took the potion just in time to see a vicious ruby mummy running towards me. It gave me the fright of my life. I dodged the lunging mummy and only then noticed a green chicken cowering behind the mummy. Hey chicken, come with me. We need to get out of this scary dump. I didn't have to tell the chicken twice. She ran after me as I ran out of the tomb, leaving the shambling ruby mummy behind us. We also passed the big, strong stone monster on the way out and left the tomb for good. The green chicken and I returned to the swamp where she was reunited with her good friend, the iron chicken. Thank you, Zozo. I'll never forget this. No problem, Iron Chicken. I just hope I don't need to go into any more creepy tombs anytime soon. On days 44 to 49, after reuniting with the chickens, I decided I needed a little reminder of the friend I was doing all of this to save. I haven't forgotten about you, Ian. That's why I continued working on the statue with some of the materials I'd been gathering. It was getting a little taller every day. I loved seeing my work get better and better like this. Okay, the statue is coming along nicely, but now I need to beef up my home defenses a little. I mined some stone out of the ground nearby and started building a wall around the base to keep it secure from any potential attackers. I'd like to see Estragon break in now. Oh wait, I should probably build a door. I built a double door into the front of the perimeter gate and mounted torches all around the sides to ward off mobs. After that, I got to work making Ian a room of his own. He needed a good place to stay after I got him back from Estragon. While I was at it, I decided to add a kitchen as well. Can't live off of apples forever. Now my base was really coming along. On days 50 to 53, my new security system was put to the test when Estragon the Humbaba attacked the base again. And this time, he brought friends. There was an army of enderophages headed by one of Estragon's generals, the mutant enderman, who was larger and stronger than your average enderman. You just don't know when to quit, do you, Estragon? Why would I quit, Zozo? I hold all the cards. You've been getting too big for your boots. This is going to teach you a valuable lesson about your place in things. Minions, attack! 
On Estragon's order, the army attacked! I thought my new perimeter wall would keep me, Coco, and our base safe, but that's when the mutant Enderman came in! He teleported past the wall and opened the door from the inside! That's when the Enderophages came storming into the base! Uh-oh, this isn't good! I pulled out my stone sword and tried my best to fight off the Enderophages. But as they attacked me, I caught the Ender Flu and felt myself getting temporarily weaker! I wasn't even strong enough to stop them from getting to Coco the Chocobo! Zozo, help! They've got me! Coco, no! But it was already too late! Estragon teleported away with Coco! All that was left at the base was me, the Enderophages, and the mutant Enderman! That's it! All of you bad guys are going down! One by one, with my stone sword, I took down all the remaining Enderophages, and the mutant Enderman teleported away in fear! The battle gave me enough XP that I gained two more hearts and double speed! I quickly ran back inside and opened my fridge and grabbed some milk! Thankfully, drinking it removed the Enderflu from me! Now it's time to get serious! I'm not letting Estragon keep Coco and Ian! I'm getting them both back! On days 54 to 57, I decided I needed to improve my base defense system before I took the fight to Estragon and his goons. I reinforced my perimeter wall by making it thicker and adding more layers, and I added lanterns around the outside to ward off any enemy mobs. Good luck teleporting through that, mutant Enderman! The next defense I needed was knowledge. That's why I returned to the underground cavern where the wise ancient spirit villager was waiting for me. Ancient spirit villager, I need your help! Estragon keeps attacking me and taking my friends, but I don't know where to even start looking for him to get my friends back. Where should I look? Hmm, well I think I may have an answer for you, Zozo. Across the forest, in the Badlands, there is an ancient temple, which I believe is owned by Estragon the Humbaba. Perhaps, if you find this place, you can discover Estragon's end portal. If you find that, you may be able to rescue your friends and stop his terrible plans. That sounds like a plan, but first, I'm gonna need to improve my weapons and equipment. If I want to take on Estragon, I need to become more powerful than ever. That's when I set off for a nearby mine. On days 58 to 62, I entered the mine and started mining iron ore with my stone pickaxe. This will be perfect for upgrading my gear. But while I was mining, I suddenly felt a presence behind me. I turned and saw the mutant Enderman lurking in the dark. You again? I've had enough of you! The mutant Enderman teleported toward me, but I wouldn't let him get the advantage here! I pulled out my stone sword and finally put an end to the crafty teleporting villain! He had one final trick up his sleeve though! Before I could back off, I got sucked into the Ender energies that exploded out of him! By the end of it though, I was in a lot better shape than he was! You picked the wrong side, mutant Enderman! I gathered up the rest of the iron and returned to my base. There, I used my crafting table to create an iron sword, an iron pickaxe, an iron axe, and a full set of iron armor. Looks like I'm getting stronger and stronger every day! Yeah! On day 63 to 66, I continued working on the statue. It was coming along well, but it still had a long way to go. And it was a heck of a lot harder to build without any of my friends here to help me. But I had to keep going, because that's what heroes do. That and go on adventures, of course. If you want to make sure you never miss an exciting Zozo adventure, hit subscribe and click the bell to get notifications. We promise we've got some even cooler adventures on the way, and you can even suggest your ideas for adventures down in the comments. I love hearing what you have to say. But now, it's time to continue my quest. Let's do this! On day 67 to 70, I followed the ancient spirit villager's instructions to find Estragon's hidden dungeon. I trekked across the forest until I reached the Badlands. There, I finally found a cave entrance guarded by a few floating ghasts. With this kind of security, this has got to be Estragon's secret dungeon. I bet Ian and Coco are trapped in here. Using my impressive speed, I ran in through the cave's entrance, avoiding the fireballs blasted at me by the patrolling ghasts. You can't catch me! I'm gonna get in there and save my friends! On day 71 to 74, I entered the dungeon. There were wither skeleton skulls on the floor, but suddenly, in a black puff of smoke, they reanimated into wither skeletons! Great! More enemies! Just what I wanted! I pulled out my iron sword and started dueling the wither skeletons, but they were stronger than I expected! Even iron wasn't that effective at stopping them! I jumped to a platform off the side of the bridge to make some distance between us. 
That sure is a long way down. The wither skeletons were hesitant to follow over the gap. Then I took a look around and noticed something sitting on the ground nearby. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Whoa, a mace. That's one of the most powerful weapons out there. Looks like I'm getting some good luck after all. With the mace, I made short work of the Wither Skeleton Squad, blasting them all into a pile of ebony bones. Not so tough now, huh? After defeating the Wither Skeletons, I noticed a gate at the back of the dungeon. I just knew that whatever I wanted, it was hiding behind that door. Let's go! On days 75 to 78, I walked through the gate at the back of the dungeon and entered Estragon's lair. The Humbaba was standing there, waiting for me, with a huge end portal on the ground behind him. I bet you're proud of yourself. You've come so far. And what a shame it'll be. What happens to you in the end? Do you have any final regrets? Yeah, not taking you down sooner. I pulled out my new mace and ran toward Estragon. He tried to dodge, but I was too fast for him. All it took was one good strike, and Estragon was thrown across the room. Needless to say, he didn't seem happy. You really have gotten stronger. And I've gotten angrier. You'll see just how angry I can get if you don't tell me where I can find my friends. Oh, you'll find them. But to find them, you'll need to follow me. Estragon jumped into the end portal and disappeared. I wasn't going to let him get away, so I jumped in right after him. On day 79 to 84, I arrived in the end, where Estragon the Humbaba was already waiting for me on top of some kind of tower. The sky above was pitch black. Something about this place made me shudder all the way down to my bones. Welcome, Zozo, to the end. I hope you find it as hospitable as I do. Give it up, Estragon. It's over. Tell me where you're keeping my friends. Oh, they're right here, Zozo. But you'll never see them again. Isn't that just tragic? Now this creep was really making me angry. Not as weak as I used to be, Estragon. I can defeat you now. Perhaps you can, but can you beat me after this? Estragon the Humbaba started floating off the top of the tower. I could feel an energy building in the air. What was happening here? Prepare to witness true power, Zozo. In a puff of poisonous purple mist, Estragon harnessed the power of the end and transformed into an Ender Dragon, one of the most powerful enemies imaginable. This is what it's all been building to. I've harnessed the power of the end and become stronger than I could have ever hoped to be. Soon, with the help of my Endermen and my Endriophages, I will conquer the world. I'll never let you do that. You'll be too dead to stop me. Estragon the Ender Dragon fired a purple fireball at me. I had no hope of surviving like this. I ran away and hopped back into the end portal. If I couldn't figure something out soon, we'd all be doomed. On days 85 to 89, I ran back through the forest to my base. By the time I got back there, I was exhausted from the journey and from my last fight. I needed to take a nap and get my energy back. That's when I got an unexpected guest. The ancient spirit villager floated into the room and woke me up. Ancient spirit villager, what are you doing here? Seems the situation has become graver than ever, Zozo. Our shared enemy, Estragon, has taken the form of an ender dragon. I know that, ancient spirit villager. I saw it happen. Then you know how much is at stake, what we must do in order to stop him and save the overworld from his tyranny. You still think I can beat him? If you wish to save your friends, Ian and Coco, then you will have to. But you will need to get stronger first. Here, take this. The ancient spirit villager gave me a sharpness enchantment, which would make my mace even stronger. But if I wanted to beat this new Estragon, I needed to make my spirit stronger as well as my weapons. Feeling well rested, I went out to the statue and put on the final finishing touches. It looked amazing, just like my friend Ian. I knew when he finally saw it, he'd love it. He always was a little full of himself. That's when the ancient spirit villager appeared to me one more time. Zozo, my time is almost at an end, but I have a message to impart to you. If you wish to survive the wrath of the Ender Dragon, you must wear the ultimate armor. You will find it in a chest, hidden in the nether wastes. There is a portal to the nether on the stone shores. You can do it. I believe in you. And with that, the ancient spirit villager faded away. I would need to do the rest alone. Thank you, ancient spirit villager, for everything!
On days 90 to 94, I used the sharpness enchantment the spirit villager gave me on my mace to make it stronger. I took my enhanced mace and made my way to the stone shores. I could see the nether portal glowing in the distance. It's now or nether. <laughs> Have I made that joke before? There were a few zombies scattered along the shoreline. When they saw me, they immediately started running towards me. Thankfully, by this point, I was way too strong for them. I took them all out with my mace and ran towards the portal. Nothing is gonna stop me now. I jumped into the portal and was suddenly transported to the fiery nightmare world of the nether. Now I've gotta find that chest. Huh, this place is way bigger than I thought. As I wandered further into the nether waste, I was attacked by a horde of zombified piglins, all oinking furiously. Guys, I'm just looking for the chest. I don't want any trouble. They weren't interested in listening. Instead, they all attacked me and gave me no choice but to fight back. Take this and that. My mace was so powerful now, it only took one strike each to destroy them. The biggest problem was that my mace was slow, so it took me a while to work through them all. They really should give you guys a raise. Once the zombified piglins were taken care of, I continued exploring until I found an empty bastion remnant. This must be where all those zombified piglins came from. I wonder if they were guarding something. I crept inside and that's when I saw it, the chest, the exact thing that the ancient spirit villager told me about. I opened it up and found something amazing inside, a set of netherite armor, the strongest armor ever. This would be perfect for keeping me safe against the wrath of Estragon. With the armor in my inventory, I ran back to the portal. It was time to return to my base and prepare. Don't worry, Ian and Coco. I'm coming back for you soon. On days 95 to 96, I continued the prep for my final battle back at the base. I used my library to craft a few new enchantment books that would give me the edge in the fight against Estragon. Even though my netherite armor was already the strongest armor you could get your hands on, it could still be stronger. I gave it the projectile protection enchantment so I could withstand anything that Estragon the Ender Dragon threw at me. But I didn't stop there. When you think dragons, you also think fire. That's exactly why I also gave my netherite armor the fire protection enchantment. You won't be able to toast me now, Estragon. But I couldn't just load all my efforts into defense. My mace was powerful, but it was also slow. And it was no good at long range. Not exactly great when your enemy can fly. That's why, just to be sure, I also made a throwing axe to keep in my inventory. Just in case Estragon decided to cheat and use his wings. And to think, I started this journey as just a fun YouTuber. Now I'm a powerful dragon hunting warrior. Let's go! On days 97 to 98, I made the hard trek across the forest toward the cave where Estragon was keeping his end portal. I was nervous. After all, the Ender Dragon was one of the strongest enemies I'd ever faced. But I knew in my heart that I could win this thing and save my friends. Do you believe I can do it? Let me know down in the comments, along with what adventure you'd like me to take on next. Anytime you want more Minecraft adventures with me, Zozo, just search ZOZO for more. That's when I noticed that dark, scary dungeon right in front of me. Okay, Estragon, it's now or never. I'm gonna defeat you once and for all. On day 99, I entered the dungeon where Estragon was keeping his portal to the end. If I didn't defeat him here, he might become all powerful and spread the ender creatures all over the world. I can't just let that happen. I jumped into the end portal and was immediately transported to the main island of the end. I saw Coco the Chocobo and Ian trapped in cages, watching helplessly while the mighty Ender Dragon floated up above. Huh, you actually came back. I can't tell whether you're brave or just foolish, but I'll destroy you either way. Coco and Ian looked amazed to see me here, and I was so happy to see them. Zozo, I can't believe you actually came back to help us. This is literally the coolest thing you've ever done. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna save you. That just made Estragon laugh. I thought it might be nice for them to see you get destroyed. It's a little parting gift from me to you, you pathetic little weakling. Who are you calling weakling? It was time to level up. I equipped my mace and felt myself beginning to change. I upgraded, reaching twice my height and strength, my final form. Let's do this, Estragon. Estragon immediately swooped down towards me, doing the Ender Dragon dive. I quickly ran and dodged out of the way as he collided with the ground. That was too close. 
I grabbed my mace and ran towards him, ready to deal a blow. But he was already up and flying around again. Aw, oh, come on, that's not fair. He unleashed a purple fireball that flew down towards me and exploded, filling the area around me with that lethal pink haze. I could hardly breathe. I needed to get out of here before it depleted my health. This is even worse than Ender Flu. The Ender Dragon had so many attacks, I could barely keep up. Just as I was recovering from the poison gas, the Ender Dragon flew towards me again, spewing a barrage of normal fireballs down onto me. If I wasn't wearing my enchanted netherite armor, I probably would have been melted, right there and then. Despite my armor, they still dealt some damage, taking out two of my hearts. Thankfully, I still had my healing potion to get me back to full health. Bottoms up. And Estragon certainly didn't like that. Face it, Zozo. I'm all powerful. You can't stop me. I will rule the overworld. But I wasn't done just yet. I grabbed my throwing axe and prepared for the next attack. This time, I'd be ready. You want to finish me off, Estragon? Come on and do it then. If you insist, Zozo. I saw Estragon preparing for another dive towards me. This would be my chance. As he got closer, I threw my axe at him, throwing off his arc and sending him collapsing into the ground with an earth-shaking crash. Before Estragon the Ender Dragon could get himself back up into the air, I pulled out my powerful mace and ran over, straight towards his head. I could see him starting to panic. Wait, Zozo, no, you can't do this. This is what happens when you kidnap my friends. Boom! With one strike of my mace to his head, Estragon the Ender Dragon was destroyed for good. It was over! You did it, Zozo! Yeah, you won! On day 100, me, Ian, and Coco escaped the end. I let them run ahead while I turned around to throw my mace into the portal to destroy it, so nobody like Estragon would ever come back. The portal started bubbling up, so I rushed to get far away from it. When I turned around, I saw a dozen of tiny falling stars raining down on the dungeon and portal, slowly reducing it to rubble. Then we made our way back to the base to finally hang out and chill. The adventure may have been over, but now with my friends back, the fun had just begun. On day one, I spawned in as Mikey from Mizen. All right, JJ, what are we doing today? Wait, where's JJ? Mikey is never without his best buddy JJ. Oh no, JJ must be in trouble. Luckily, I've got eight hearts. It must be because I'm a turtle. I've got this tough shell to help protect me from danger, and I'm probably a really good swimmer. This'll help me find JJ for sure. I looked up and realized I'd spawned under a tree filled with apples, so I reached up to pick myself a thinking snack. But before I could take a bite, an arrow flew past my head. Oh no, skeletons! I grabbed as many apples as I could carry and ran away before one of their arrows hit me, since I had to stay in one piece to find JJ. Hey, what's the big idea? I'm just picking apples. I just kept running and running until I found a log cabin in the middle of the woods. It wasn't anything fancy, and it definitely needed some repairs, but it was cozy and a perfect place to hide for the night. There was even a lake right next to the cabin. Maybe I could go swimming once I was sure the skeletons were gone, and there were probably fish to catch in there for dinner. I just wish that JJ were here to see it too. On day two, I went exploring around the lake and gathered some wood. I gathered enough wood to make an ax. I could use it to fix up the cabin for when I found JJ. Next, I went back to the apple tree to gather some more fruit. Hey, with enough apples, maybe I could even make a pie. But I didn't have the chance to think too much more about that because there was a gremlin chef coming up to pick apples too. Please don't take all the apples. I need at least four. Don't worry, I left you plenty. Oh, thank you. I was worried. Have you seen my friend JJ? He's missing. Don't know anyone by that name, I'm afraid. Someone in the village might. You should go ask around. Thanks, I will. Just be careful. Someone's been stealing animals and supplies around here. Maybe they they took your friend, too. I sure hoped not, but if JJ was in trouble, I would find a way to help him. Thank you, chef. Good luck with whatever you're making. It's pie. Great minds think alike. And I guess he was pretty great. I took my apples back to the cabin, and along the way I found some sticks and string. I used them to craft a fishing rod and went fishing in the lake. I caught three fish. On day three, I decided to work on fixing up the cabin as much as I could. I patched some holes in the wall and added a fence all around it for some extra protection. While I was working on the cabin, I found a secret back room. It was hidden behind a picture hanging on the wall. There was so much space back there, I had no idea. If I couldn't find that 
room without looking super carefully, then I was willing to bet no monsters would be able to find me in there either. I decided to make the secret back room my new base, and got to work filling it with everything I found so far. The apples, the fish, and my tools. Then, I went back to the lake to try and catch some more fish. Before I started fishing, I saw a block near the trees that looked a little strange. I used my pickaxe to break it open, and inside was a nasty silverfish. I should have been more careful. I knew they could contaminate blocks in some areas. I managed to fight off the silverfish, and when I got finished, I felt myself getting stronger. Defeating them made me a better fighter, and I knew I could handle the next enemy way better. Clearly, the exercise helped, because now I had 10 hearts. I was so excited, I swam around the lake, and I was an even faster swimmer, too. What an exciting day. But I couldn't lose sight of my goal. I had to find JJ. On day four to five, I was walking toward the village to see if anyone there could help me find JJ. On the way, I found a bush full of sweet berries. I stopped to pick some of the berries, when all of a sudden I was surrounded by skeletons again. This time, there was no way for me to run away. Why are you doing this? What do you want? The boss wants us to bring you to him, just like your little friend. JJ, you know where he is? Of course we kidnapped him in the service of the fallen king. Who is that? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would. That's why I'm asking. Enough talking. You're coming with us. But I was stronger this time than I was before. I'd have to face them, and I wasn't going anywhere without a fight. The skeletons started closing in on me, but I pulled out my axe and started swinging as fast and as hard as I could. I wasn't sure if I'd make it. There were so many of them. But I fought hard and used my newfound strength and speed to get them tired out and taken down. Then I grabbed my berries and ran back to my base, safe and sound. But I still had so many questions. What did they do with JJ? Where did they want to take me? And why? And who was the fallen king? And what did he have planned? I needed to get a good night's rest, because there was definitely a big fight waiting for me in the days to come. On day six to eight, I found a cave in the woods where I could do some mining. I was going to need a lot more tools if I was going to find the fallen king and get JJ back from him. Wow, this cave is amazing. Look at all of this stuff. I found some flint, coal, iron, and even some gold. I took all the materials back to my base, crafted some furnaces, and crafted a pickaxe, a sword, a bow and arrow, and a pair of shiny gold boots. These will help protect me when I go up against those skeletons again. It had gotten pretty dark by the time I was finished, and I heard some strange noises coming from outside my cabin. I looked outside, and there were a bunch of gas trying to get inside. They were floating by the fence, opening their mouths, and getting ready to shoot fireballs at me. You picked the wrong cabin to mess with. If you just turn around and leave, we won't have to have any trouble. Otherwise, I'm going to get my bow and start firing arrows, and you won't like that very much. I waited for them to leave, but they didn't listen to my warning. <sighs> Time to fight some gas then. I grabbed my bow and shot the first arrow. Before long, they were retreating, running away from the cabin like they were scared of me. I guess they were. With my new equipment, I was even tougher than before. With the danger gone for now, I hopped into bed to get some well-deserved rest. On days 9 and 10, I finally made it into the village. I was looking for answers, but I was also looking for some more supplies. I couldn't keep eating apples, berries, and fish. I needed all my strength if I was going to find JJ and defeat the fallen king. But when I arrived in the village, something was wrong. All of the shops had their doors closed and locked, and no one was walking around outside. It was as if they were all hiding in their houses. Hello? Anyone here? But no one answered. Maybe they were scared of me. But why? I was just a friendly turtle, looking to buy some food and ask some questions. Someone opened their door and pushed out one loaf of bread, before closing it and locking it again. Oh, that must be for me. Thank you. I took the bread and headed back to my base. As I made my way through the woods, I saw a dark figure standing between the trees. He was wearing black armor with purple horns. So, this is where you've been hiding. Who are you? Don't you know by now? After all, I am the one who took your friend. The Fallen King! What have you done with JJ? I'll tell you if you just come with me. Never! I drew my sword, ready to battle with him, when suddenly a friendly cat jumped out of a tree and landed in front of me. No, don't do it! He's too strong to take on by yourself. But he has JJ! He took my friend too. I'll help you, but if you try now, you'll lose. As I watched, the Fallen King sprouted a pair of purple wings and flew away. I'll be back. 
Then it was just me and the cat. What's your name, kitty? Bella. Nice to meet you, Bella. On days 11 to 12, I built another bed in the cabin so Bella could have a place to sleep. I just knew she and JJ were going to get along great once we saved him. Then the two of us went out to gather supplies for the coming battle with the fallen king. She was really good at catching fish and didn't even need a rod to do it. Suddenly, she looked up at something. Look out! I turned to see what she was warning me about and I saw a wither skeleton running toward me with its sword drawn. It hit me and I fell to the ground, losing hearts. I tried to get up and fight back, but it hit me again, hard. I lost more hearts. Luckily, the wither skeleton didn't follow us, but the damage was done and I was getting pretty worried. I went back into the mine and looked for anything I could use and I found some more gold. Yes. Perfect. I hurried back home to craft a gold sword and went back out looking for the wither skeleton. It was still by the lake when I got there. This time, I was able to fight back and knock it down. Back at the base, I gave Bella my old sword. Now we're both ready to fight. While I was gone, she planted seeds for wheat and apple trees. When we finally got JJ back, I just knew he was going to love the amazing base we were making together. On days 13 to 15, I was working on the cabin when Bella came and found me. There's something you need to see. What is it? I found a book. I think it's about the fallen king. Take a look. It looked like it was decades old and the pages were almost falling out. I picked up the book and started to read. Long ago, there was a greedy king. He was an ordinary man, but his evil heart made him seem more like a monster. All day long, he would steal from his villagers, taking their food, their gold, and even kidnapping people to take to his castle. There, he would force them to compete in challenges for their freedom, trying to see which one was the strongest, the toughest, and the smartest. When he found the winner, he would defeat them in a challenge one-on-one -on -one to show that he was the very best in all the land. The people rose up and stormed his castle, rebelling against all the pain and strife he had caused. But the king had a secret plan in place, and just when they thought they had defeated him, he became something else. A shadowy warrior with purple wings and horns. He went into hiding, but promised to one day return to take back the throne once again. When the fallen king returns, only a brave hero led by the power of goodness and friendship will be able to stop him. But what did any of that have to do with me? It's you. You're the hero. No, I'm just me. I can't defeat some magical king. I just want to get my friend JJ back so we can have fun exploring. But... Forget this. I didn't want to admit it, but I was scared. What if I wasn't strong enough? What if I let everyone down? JJ, Bella, and myself. On day 16 to 19, I woke up and noticed that Bella was gone. And when I looked outside, I saw footprints. Someone must have come to the cabin and taken her. But it didn't look like the work of the fallen king. And I could see snow tracked on the ground that hadn't melted yet. I remembered that there was snow further up in the mountains around the forest. That must be where Bella is. I hiked up the mountain until the whole world around me was as snowy and icy as it could be. It took me two whole days to make it. But then I finally saw Bella. She was locked in a cage, guarded by snow nightmares. Bella, what happened? I managed to escape these guys before I found you, but they must have tracked me down. You have to help me, please. I'll do my best. It's not just me either. Look. I looked. The snow nightmares heard me planning and started closing in on me. I drew my gold sword and started to swing at them. They went down one by one, and suddenly I noticed myself getting bigger. I gained two hearts, and I had a total of 12 now. I released Bella from her cage, and together we fought off the rest of the snow nightmares. Then we freed the fox. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you? What do you know about the fallen king? He has my friend, and I have to defeat him. I knew now I could do it if I tried. I've only heard a little bit, but I know there is supposed to be a legendary potion. The only way to defeat him for good, so he never comes back again. Do you know where it is? I'm sorry, I don't. I don't even know for sure if it's real. And with that, the fox scurried away. But we knew more than we did before, and tomorrow we would start looking for the potion. On days 20 to 22, we made it back to the cabin and found it covered in even more gas. Get out of here, you creeps! I started firing arrows at them with my bow. They scattered before they could do any damage to the base, and Bella and I went inside. Tell me more about JJ. He sounds pretty special if you're going to all this trouble for him. He's my best friend. We do everything together. Or we did, before the Fallen King skeletons kidnapped him. But he always knows how to have fun. He's the best at challenges, and he supports me through the good and the bad times. Maybe we could do something to honor him, to remember what you're fighting for, like build a statue. That's a great idea. Before 
I went to gather supplies for the statue, I placed torches all around the perimeter of the base. This should keep any more nasty monsters out. With that long overdue change taken care of, I went to harvest some wood for the great big statue we were going to build of JJ. I found some chickens and harvested their feathers. Back at the cabin, I cleared a whole bunch of grass and blocks to make space for the statue. Then Bella and I got to work building. It was so much easier with Bella there to help. Work always goes by faster when you have a friend lending a hand. Or a paw. And hey, by the way, thank you for watching. If you liked the video so far, that would mean the world to me if you subscribed and turned on notifications. That way, you'll be sure to catch my next adventure. Thanks! On days 23 to 26, I was in the cabin when suddenly a skeleton came up to the door. He was wearing full armor and carrying a big impressive sword. Get out of here, bonehead! I attacked him with my own sword and managed to chase him off. As he ran away, I noticed that he dropped something. It was a shield. A brigand shield to be exact. I decided to test it out. Bella, attack me with your axe. What? Just do it. I want to try something. She ran at me with her axe and the shield protected me. It blocked every single blow. Wow, this thing is amazing. Just as I was preparing to test out my new shield some more, I heard someone rustling around outside the door to the cabin. If that's another skeleton. But when I looked, I saw a cat instead. Bella, are you here? I heard from the fox that you found a safe place to stay. Kiki, it's you. This is my friend I told you about. How did you get away? I managed to sneak out while the king was busy with something else. Someone named JJ helped distract him. That's my friend. Was he okay? He was, but he definitely needs help. But I'm so tired from running for days. Can I stay here, please? Of course. I let Kiki inside and decided to ask her some more questions tomorrow. On days 27 to 31, I asked Kiki what she might happen to know about a legendary potion, the one that the fox had told us about. I don't know much about it, but I do know someone who does. A wise old monkey who lives on an island not too far away. So we'll need to find a boat. Don't worry. I know someone who will let us borrow his. Come with me. Kiki and I said goodbye to Bella and left to go get ourselves a boat and travel to see the wise monkey. We borrowed a boat from a kind man with a shop by the ocean and set sail toward the island. After a couple of days at sea though, we suddenly felt something hit the side of the boat, shaking it all over. What was that? I looked over the side of the boat into the water and saw a huge shark ramming itself into the boat. It snapped its teeth at me and tried to bite me. No way, we've got places to be. I shot an arrow at the shark, but I missed. It tried to bite the boat, but I fired another arrow. This time, I hit it. Wounded, the shark swam away and out of sight. I guess these waters are more dangerous than I thought. We'll have to keep an eye out for more trouble. Somehow, I had the feeling we would encounter more danger before we had everything we needed. But it was all worth it to find my friend. On days 32 to 35, we found a hut along the beach surrounded by palm trees full of coconuts. I stopped to pick some coconuts to take back to my base. Hey, those are my coconuts. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Excuse me, are you wise, Jim? Who's asking? I'm Kiki, and this is my friend. We heard you might know something about the legendary Potion of Light. I might, but how do I know I can trust you? We're preparing to fight the Fallen King. He has my friend, JJ, and we need to rescue him. So you're looking for the potion, eh? We all turned around, and there was the Fallen King, hovering over the water with his wings spread out wide. You'll never find it, and you'll never defeat me. Get ready for a beating, Fallen King. We won't let you get away with this. Oh, really? You and what army? Find me when you're ready. Pathetic. Then the Fallen King turned and left, leaving us looking on angrily. We turned to Wise Jim the monkey. Would you like to come back with us to our base? It should be safer there. Yes, please. Let me just pack a bag. And he grabbed as many coconuts and bananas as he could carry. Okay, now I'm ready. So with plenty of snacks for the journey, we all boarded the boat together. On days 36 to 39, I had arrived back at the base with Kiki and our new friend, Wise Jim. While well, he enjoyed some bananas and took in the new view, Kiki, Bella, and me all got to work building a new area for him to stay in. We added a treehouse onto one of the trees just outside the cabin. Here, this is just for you. We hope you like it. Like it? I love it! Once he was all settled, I decided to ask him what he knew about the legendary potion or the potion of light. The potion of light? Yes, I've heard many stories about it. I can't say for sure where it is hidden, but I do know that it is buried in an abandoned mineshaft out in the Badlands. But be warned, it is a harsh landscape, 
and there are no friendly creatures that live there. The Badlands, huh? Sounds pretty bad. I'll need to make sure I prepare before I go. Before I could leave for the Badlands, though, Bella and I needed to work on the next part of the JJ statue. I couldn't help but feel like if I could finish it before I faced off against the Fallen King, I would be brave enough to rescue the friend it represented. With the power of friendship on my side, no Badlands monsters, skeletons, or even the Fallen King himself could stand in my way. From days 40 to 43, I headed down into the mines to look for some diamonds. I saw Kiki running out of a tunnel, screaming. What's going on? Spiders! That tunnel is full of spiders! Did you happen to see any diamonds in there? I did, but the spiders were crawling around all over them. Yuck! I'm out of here! Just a couple little spiders? I fought gas and skeletons. I can handle spiders. I took a look into the cave and saw the spiders all over the ground. They were pretty big, and I didn't want to get anywhere near them. So I fired an arrow at the spiders from a distance instead. They didn't like that too much, and they swarmed at me. One of them bit me, and it was poisonous. It brought me down to two hearts. I had to draw my sword and fight it if I wanted to survive. It was a close call, but I managed to defeat the spiders without breaking my sword or losing any more hearts. Yes. I scooped up the diamonds and rushed back to my base with them. There, I used them to craft a diamond axe, diamond sword, and diamond boots. Sparkly and super strong and durable. On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the Badlands in search of the underground mineshaft where the Potion of Light was hidden. Wow, look at all of this sand! And it's so hot out! I hope I can find the potion fast. I'm already getting thirsty! As I was walking through the sand and looking for some shade to take a quick break in, I suddenly locked eyes with an Enderman. Uh-oh. But then I remembered. I was much stronger than I had been before, and I had all my upgraded gear. This was going to be a snap! After just a few hits, the Enderman went down. I was honestly kind of surprised at how easy it was. Maybe I could take on the Fallen King after all. Maybe it wouldn't even be that hard. As I kept walking, I saw more Endermen up ahead, attacking a horse. Hey, leave him alone! But the horse didn't need my help. He took down the Enderman all by himself and then galloped over to me. Ha, huh, I'm Ed. I'm Zozo. I'm out here looking for a special potion. Have you heard anything about it? I found the mineshaft where it was hidden, but it was gone. All that was left was a note, saying it had been taken away and hidden somewhere else, by the ocean. Oh, I guess I need to head that way then. Are you trying to fight the Fallen King? Let me help you. Hop on my back, and I'll get you there faster. So I jumped onto Ed's back, and we rode off into the sunset. On days 50 to 53, I rode on Ed's back all the way to the beach. After how dry and dusty the Badlands were, it was amazing to breathe in that cool sea air. Hmm, do you think we could take a break and go swimming, Ed? The water looks great. Sounds like a swell idea to me. So we hopped into the water and started splashing around. It was so much fun, and I couldn't wait to splash around with JJ when we finally rescued him. But that would have to wait. We had company. Oh no, it's the shark! That's right, the shark was back, and he looked hungry. He was a super scary enemy before, but that was before I got my diamond sword. Take that, sharky! With a few strong hits, I was able to turn this shark into sushi and Ed and I were safe again. Now it was time to look around. Maybe the legendary Potion of Light was around here somewhere. That's when we found a little cove on the edge of the beach and the friendly ocean nymph that lived there. I asked her about the note telling us we could find the Potion of Light on the beach, but she told us if the potion was ever here, it's gone now. Bummer! How am I ever going to fight the Fallen King and save my friend JJ? I think the friendly ocean nymph felt bad for me because she gave me a diamond helmet to match my axe, sword, and boots. I'm even tougher now. On days 54 to 57, I decided I needed to beef up the base's security to keep me and my friends safe from the Fallen King. After all, he's attacked us before, he could always do it again. Maybe the base needed a bigger wall, made of stone this time. If I mine enough stone to make a big strong wall, there's no way the Fallen King's forces are going to get in and kidnap us. So that's exactly what I did. When I'd finished mining the stone and building the wall, I put torches along the top for extra safety. That's when Wise Jim came over. Hey. I've been whipping up a new enchantment that'll help you defeat the Fallen King, but I need a favor. Some zombies have been hanging around my favorite banana tree. Go scare them off. That enchantment sounded pretty sweet, so I grabbed my bow and arrow and went after the mob of zombies hanging around Wise Jim's favorite banana tree. I've gotten so strong now, these guys are no challenge for me. I ran in, firing arrow after arrow, until those nasty zombies were running for the hills. I know JJ would have been so proud of me. When I went back to Wise Jim, he gave my diamond sword an unbreakable enchantment, making it stronger and tougher than it had ever been. I bet the Fallen King is shaking in his boots. Don't worry, JJ. I'm almost strong enough to come and save you. 
On days 58 to 62, things got serious. It all started when I was working on my JJ statue. I think I was about half done, and it was looking great. I needed to make it perfect, so when I rescued JJ and all my new friends got to meet him, he'd be able to see what a good job I did. I was so wrapped up in making the statue perfect, I didn't even notice that some of the Fallen King's scariest goons were on their way. A gang of skeletons in full diamond armor with diamond swords. This has gone on far enough. The Fallen King has sent us to crack your shell, destroy your base, and leave nothing standing. Give up or face our wrath. But there was no way I was going to give in. I told Bella and Kiki to hold inside the base and make sure nobody got in. Well, Wise Jim and I took on the diamond skeletons. Let's show these boneheads who's boss. But the fight was way harder than we thought. The Fallen King must have sent some of his best men, because as we fought, they just wouldn't go down. Thankfully, Wise Jim and I fought hard, hard enough to defeat some of the diamond skeletons and send the rest running. We were just about to celebrate when one of the fleeing skeletons fired an arrow from the woods and hit Wise Jim. No! I tried to help, but it was already too late. Wise Jim was gone. On day 63 to 66, I chased the diamond skeleton into the deep dark forest as he ran away. He destroyed Wise Jim, and I needed to avenge him. There was no way I'd let them escape, no matter how spooky the deep forest got. Get back here. You want to fight? Let's fight! I backed him into a corner and threatened him with my unbreakable diamond sword. Tell me, where can I find the legendary potion of light? You'll never get it. It's being guarded by one of the Fallen King's strongest warriors at the bottom of the King's Royal Gold Mine. And besides, you're not leaving this forest alive. That's when the other surviving diamond skeletons came out of the woods around me. Oh no, this whole thing was a trap. They were trying to lure me away from the base this whole time. This is for you, Wise Jim. I'll never forget you. That's when I fought the strongest I ever fought and defeated all of the skeletons except one who was shaking with fear. Thankfully, he could still be useful to me. Tell me, where can I find the Fallen King's royal gold mine? On day 67 to 70, using the last Diamond Skeleton's instructions, I made my way to the Fallen King's royal gold mine. It was huge and horrible. Villagers that the Fallen King had kidnapped were being forced to mine gold for him, or they'd be attacked by some of his skeleton warriors. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to get you out of here. Who's the boss around these parts? The captured villagers told me to travel further into the mine, where I'd meet one of the Fallen King's strongest warriors, Dorzen, the Soul Eater. A huge red monster with a scary smile and a fist made of stone. He was so tough, even my diamond sword would have trouble hurting him. He was waiting next to a pit filled with lava. It isn't too late to give up, Dorzen. Tell me where to find the Potion of Light and let all these villagers go, and I won't have to hurt you. But Dorzen wasn't interested in talking this out. I don't even know if he could talk. He just attacked me and managed to take all of my hits while beating me again and again. He was for sure the toughest enemy I'd ever faced. It was such a big mistake to come here alone. Just as Dorzen was about to throw me into the lava pit, Ed the horse charged in. Get away from my friend, you monster. Ed charged right into Dorzen and knocked him over into the magma pit. Dorzen got burned and ran off. He'd probably think twice about messing with us again. Thanks for the save, Ed. On day 71 to 74, Ed and I searched through the mine to find where Dorzen may have been hiding the legendary Potion of Light. Ed was still grateful for me defeating the shark that attacked us on the beach, so he was more than happy to help me rescue JJ from the Fallen King. Eventually, after mining through some stone, we found a secret door that led into Dorzon the Soul Eater's lair. Talk about spooky! The place was dark, lit only by a few little torches and scary-looking weapons on racks over the walls. There were even a few villagers locked up in a cage. We let them out, of course, along with all the others. But no matter how hard we looked, we couldn't find the Potion of Light. It didn't make sense. That skeleton told me Dorzon was hiding it in the Fallen King's royal gold mine. Look, I found a note. What does it say, Ed? I don't know. Horses can't read. He was right, so I took a look at the note. It came directly from the Fallen King. It said, Well, well, well. It looks like you found your way into my mind. Exactly as I expected. You're an impressive one. I can see why JJ talks about you all the time. If you care about him, I suggest you stop looking, or both of you are going to get hurt. Rats! Looks like the Fallen King was always one step ahead. On days 75 to 78, I headed back to the base to build some improvements and think about what I'd learned. After Wise Jim died, I was worried about Bella and Kiki, and I realized that if more of the Fallen King's army attacked, they needed a safe place to hide. I added an iron safe room to the inside of the base with a secure door and torches to ward off mobs. If someone attacked, they could hide in there while I fought off the bad guys. I had also taken some gold from the Fallen King's gold mine and turned it into a chest plate and some leggings. 
That's when Doors on the Soul Eater returned, and Bella and Kiki ran off to hide in the new safe room. It was time for me and Doors on to finish this. He was tough, even with his lava burns. And with my new armor, I was able to get an edge and defeat him for good. Doors on won't be eating any more souls. And for defeating such an evil monster, I got upgraded. I was bigger, stronger, faster, and my shell was tougher than ever. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see the Fallen King take me on now. That's when I noticed that Dorzon had dropped a note. A note I was never meant to see, directly from the Fallen King. It read, Once you've captured Zozo, take him to my mountain castle. My other operative will meet you there. And now, he's gonna be meeting me. On day 79 to 84, I traveled alone to the Fallen King's mountain castle, where Dorzan was going to meet another one of the Fallen King's goons. Surely this guy would be able to direct me to the king himself, but when I finally arrived at the castle, after two days of mountain climbing, I didn't find any monsters waiting for me. I turned to see a viking named Bjorn walking up behind me, carrying a diamond axe. Hello, my friend. I see you too are seeking the Fallen King. He kidnapped one of my friends too. Maybe we can work together. That's a great idea. Let's do it. You can help me free my friend JJ, and I can help you free yours. Wait, how did you find out about this mountain castle, Bjorn? Ah, uh, good question. That's when Bjorn suddenly attacked me with his diamond axe. Thankfully, with my upgraded shell and a full set of armor, he couldn't do too much damage. I pulled out my diamond sword and hit him until he gave up and dropped his weapon. Bjorn was the Fallen King's other goon all along. Okay, Bjorn, if that is your real name, tell me where I can find the Fallen King. It is my real name, and the Fallen King's true base is in the Dread Palace, in the volcanic magma fields. But that's one of the most dangerous places on the map. How could anyone live there? The Fallen King is undefeatable. He can live anywhere he likes. And if you think you can just waltz in there and defeat him, then you've got a death wish, kid. On days 85 to 89, I made my way back to my base, feeling more doubtful than ever. Sure, I had a cool sword and a tough shell, but what's that worth compared to the Fallen King and his army of evil? What if there was no way for me to save JJ, and he just ended up being forced to mine gold for an evil king in a palace full of lava? I felt so down about all this that I decided to just go to bed. That's when Bella came and woke me up. She had some words of encouragement for me. Don't you remember the story? You're the hero who's destined to defeat the Fallen King. Maybe the story is wrong, Bella. He's so much more powerful than I thought. Even some of his foot soldiers were able to beat Wise Jim. How can I beat him? That's when Bella had a genius idea. Maybe you can use your natural skills against him. You're a turtle. You have a tough shell. Maybe you don't need armor. But why would I fight without armor? Isn't it obvious? The Fallen King wears a huge set of heavy armor. It's tough, but it slows him down. If you go in there without your armor, you'll still be tough because of your shell. But you'll be able to run circles around the Fallen King. Maybe that's the edge you need. It was a wild idea. So wild, it just might work. On days 90 to 94, I prepared for the final battle against the Fallen King and to rescue JJ. I removed my armor, just like Bella said. I was so much faster. I bet the Fallen King could never be this fast. I bet I can leave that meanie in the dust. But if I'm relying on my natural defenses, I'm gonna need to make sure I've got one heck of an attack. I needed to gather the material to upgrade my diamond sword and my bow. Enough that even the Fallen King and his strongest minions won't stand a chance. First, the sword. Using some of the knowledge from the books Wise Jim kept in his treehouse, I gave my unbreakable sword three more enchantments. Sharpness, which increases damage. Knockback, which knocks my enemies back when I hit them. And finally, Fire Aspect, which sets my enemies on fire when I hit them directly. I can't wait to show JJ this awesome sword when I rescue him. Next, I upgraded my bow. Just like my sword, I gave it extra power, which makes it do even more damage. Then I gave it knockback so I could stun my enemies and knock them off their feet. And of course, flame, so my arrows will set my enemies on fire, just like my sword. Yes. Ha! The Fallen King isn't going to know what hit him. Hang in there, JJ. I'm going to defeat the king, save you, and set everybody free. Believe it. On days 95 to 97, I started to get nervous. Sure, I was a lot stronger and faster and had way more powerful weapons than I used to, but every time I'd faced the Fallen King before, he was so scary, I needed to run away rather than defeat him. What if he's got even more tricks up his sleeve? No, no, I can't think like this. I can't let him get into my head. This is just what he wants. To try and calm my nerves, I decided to finally finish my JJ statue. Even if I was too weak to take down the Fallen King and save my friend from his clutches, I'd have this statue to remember him by. But when I actually finished the statue, everything changed. I realized it'd been the first time in almost 100 days that I'd seen JJ, but 
this wasn't JJ. It was just a statue. He couldn't talk to me, play games with me, do fun Minecraft challenges with me. He couldn't do anything that JJ could do with me. He could just sit there and remind me that he's gone. That's it. I can't afford to be a coward. Even if I'm afraid, even if I'm in danger, it's worth the risk to get JJ back. I know I'm strong enough to do this. It's time to take the Fallen King down. And when JJ is here again, he's going to see this awesome statue that I made for him. There's just one more thing that I need to do first. On day 98, I spoke to my friends at the base, Bella, Kiki, and Ed the Horse. I told them that I was going to go to the Dread Palace, take on the Fallen King, and get JJ back. I want to come too. Yeah, let me tag along. Let's take down this evil guy. No, Kiki, Ed, you've put yourself in too much danger already. You two hang back and stay in the safe room. We've known each other the longest. We started this, so we'll finish this. Nobody can disagree with that. The two of us took the time to discuss a battle plan before we set off. After all, the Fallen King had always been one step ahead, so we needed to make sure that we would be two steps ahead if we wanted to beat him. And with that, we were ready to set off. Anything else you want to say? Seeing as this might be the last time we see each other, if this goes badly and the Fallen King captures us. Good luck! And make sure to subscribe to Zozo! Z-O-Z-O! -O. We've got even more crazy, wild, and exciting adventures to come, where our hero fights diabolical villains, makes awesome bases and weapons, and meets more interesting friends like us. All of us agreed, and with that, Bella and I set off for the Dread Palace. On day 99, the assault on the Dread Palace finally began. Just as we expected, the Fallen King had the place heavily guarded. A bunch of diamond-armored skeleton warriors were assembled outside the front gate. But it's okay. We planned for this. Good luck, Bella. I believe in you. The first stage in the plan was simple. Bella would go in first with her cat speed and agility and distract the first wave of guards. With the skeleton army drawn away from the front gate, it was time for me to storm in and take charge. But of course, it wasn't that easy. In the opening hallway of the Dread Palace, the Fallen King had built in trap doors that dropped down into pits full of molten lava. Yikes! Thankfully, I was able to dodge the trap doors and keep going. But it wasn't over yet. Not by a long shot. Once I made it past the first few hallways, the Fallen King deployed another one of his deadly minions, the Behemoth, a huge, extremely powerful monster. I needed to be careful. Even a couple hits from a monster like that would destroy me. But because I was only wearing my natural armor, just like Bella and I had planned, I could run circles around him. I hit him several times with my fully upgraded sword, setting him on fire and knocking him down for good. Is that the best you got, Fallen King? Maybe I underestimated you. Hey, over here! I recognized that voice. It was JJ. I'd finally found him. No time to waste. I ran over to the cell the Fallen King was keeping my best friend in and set him free. I was so excited to be hanging out with him again. But we weren't done yet. I told him to head back to our base. I have some unfinished business to take care of. On day 100, with JJ saved, I needed to make sure he and everyone else was never captured again. I needed to fight and defeat the Fallen King once and for all. I ran deeper into the Dread Palace, sword and bow ready to take on anything I saw. First, more diamond armored skeletons, which I was able to take out with a quick volley of arrows. Bam! 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 They ran away, screaming and on fire. Then, a behemoth and Soul Eater tag team emerged from the dark as I got even closer to the throne room. These guys would have seemed tough a while back, but after what I'd been through, nothing could stop me. I pulled out my enchanted diamond sword and went to work, sending them burning and running just like the skeletons. I felt unstoppable until I reached the throne room. There stood the Fallen King, and it looked like this whole time he was waiting for me. At long last, you're here. You've been a thorn in my side for too long. Now I'm going to destroy you personally. Are you ready to see true power? Rather than replying, I shot the Fallen King with a bunch of super-powered arrows. But all that seemed to do was make him laugh. But that's when he got really scary. The Fallen King unleashed his true form, growing larger and more powerful than he'd ever been before. I couldn't fight him like this. I needed to run. I kept running down the hallway as this giant, terrifying version of the Fallen King left the throne room and chased me. You can't run forever. You're mine now. I ducked into the Fallen King's supply room, closed the door, and began building a brick wall in front of it. But that wouldn't hold him for long. He was already starting to smash his way through it. Think. 
think, but that's when I saw it. Sitting on the shelf, the legendary potion of light. Wasting no time, I grabbed and took the potion. That's when everything changed. I grew to the same size as the fallen king. My hearts and armor literally doubled. I was faster, stronger, and even had the power of light on my side to go against the fallen king's darkness. When he breached the wall, the battle was on. I attacked him relentlessly, dodging his attacks and striking back at him. Just like Bella said, even in his upgraded state, his heavy armor slowed him down. He couldn't stop me from getting him. Curse you! Curse you! I struck him one more time with my burning sword, and the fire consumed him. The fallen king was no more, and everyone he'd captured was free. When I finally returned to the base, I saw that JJ and Bella had returned safely, and were hanging out with Ed and Kiki next to the statue I made. Hey, is that supposed to be me? On day one, I spawned in as a baby robot. Whoa, I'm a tiny robot. But where am I? Why am I in a cage? I looked around and saw there were a couple other bigger robots nearby. They must be my parents. I decided I would go ask them what we were doing here. But before I had a chance to ask them, the door to the cage opened and a giant rat walked into the cage. All right, you junkers, time to get to work. We're tired of taking orders from you. We can't stand by and watch this factory pollute the world any longer. You think you can rise up against us? Sounds like I need to teach you a lesson, pal. The rat lunged forward and started fighting my robot dad. As they were fighting, my robot mom came up next to me. Zozo, the door is open. Move quickly and get out of here. We will hold him off. But I don't understand. Why are we working for this guy? What are we doing here? There's no time to explain, but he isn't even the one in charge of everything. I hope you never run into his boss. No hurry, get out of here! My mom hurried away to help fight off the rat and I took the chance to rush out the door and escape. As I drove away, I turned around and saw the rat destroy my dad! Dad, no! I thought about going back, but I noticed I only had six hearts. If I was captured or killed, my dad's sacrifice would be in vain. As I drove away, I noticed that I had just escaped from a huge factory. There were big pillars of smoke coming out of it, which must have been causing all of the yellow haze. I better get out of here before that rat shows up, or worse, his boss. I was driving away when suddenly I started beeping, and my battery started to drain. Oh no, my battery is going to run out in 30 seconds! What's going on? In a panic, I backed up into the sunlight and saw that my battery immediately started to recharge and returned to full. Whew, that was scary. I must be a solar-powered robot. I'll have to be sure to stay in the light when I'm out and about. I soon found a good place to build a shelter for the night and quickly put up some walls. I made sure to leave the roof open so I could power back up in the morning. On day two, I woke up to a full battery and sunlight coming into my shelter. Looks like my shelter kept me safe through the night, but I have a lot I need to figure out today, starting with rescuing my mom, if she's alive. I knew I wouldn't be able to get back into the factory without gearing up first, which is when I noticed that my arm was a permanent drill. I'll bet I can break all kinds of locks with this arm. I'm going to try and go get some supplies. I stepped outside my base when I was suddenly attacked by some kind of tiny animal. Ah, what the heck are you? Get back! I swung my drill arm and quickly defeated the enemy. That looked like some kind of mutated bunny. I wonder where he came from. I'll have to keep an eye out. I headed over to a nearby hill where there were some trees growing and collected some wood and stone. Then I set up a crafting table and made an axe, shovel, and sword. My drill arm was pretty handy though. So I decided to start building a mine inside my base. I drilled into the ground and saw I was able to break a bunch of blocks at once. Whoa, mining is going to be a breeze. I was digging down and my battery alarm went off again. I was so excited about my drill, I almost forgot I had to stay in the sun. Luckily I was able to get out before the timer ran out too quickly. Looks like I'm gonna have to be a lot more strategic every time I wanna leave the sun. On day three, I decided to venture out a little further to see if I could find some more supplies. I knew I still wasn't strong enough to break my mom out. As I got closer to a nearby cave, I saw something strange inside. What is that? It looks like there's a deactivated robot in there. Their battery must have run out. As I got closer to investigate, I was attacked by a mutant pig. Whoa, get back. The mutant pig had come out of nowhere, but I was able to quickly fight them off. As they disappeared, I saw a whole horde of pigs coming over the hill. I better get out of here. As I was driving away, I couldn't help but wonder what was happening to all of the animals and who was in that cave. Maybe they would be able to help me in the fight. I'd have to try and come check on them later. On days four and five, I was running away when I stumbled across a small farming village. I noticed none of their crops really seemed to be growing. I decided to try and get more information, so I headed to the house at the top of the hill. Hello, is anyone home? The door opened and a farmer stepped out. Hey there, I'm trying to find out what's going on around here. What's wrong with your crops? She explained that the smog coming from the factory was killing all of her crops. Not only that, the smog was also turning all the animals into mutated versions of themselves. She explained that the only way would be to take out the factory's boss. Fat Cat, but everyone was too scared to get close to the factory, so she didn't know any good ways to do that. Well, I've been there once. I can try and get close and see what I can find out. Thanks for your help. I drove off in the direction of the factory. Hopefully I could learn something new before trying to break in. On day six to eight, I started making my way back towards the factory. As I reached the top of the hill, I ran into a mutated sheep. Ah, another one! Take this, you creepy sheepy! By using my sword, I was able to take it down. That farmer was right. The smog is making all the animals crazy. 
I kept going on my way when I ran into a zombie. As I started to attack him, I noticed he had something interesting in his hand. Are those robot tracks? I'm sure you won't mind me taking those off your hands. After a few hits, he was down. And I was right. He dropped a new set of tracks. I picked them up. Oh, nice. These Mark 1 tracks will give me an armor upgrade. Oh, and check it out. They gave me a speed boost, too. Now I'll be able to get farther on my limited battery. On days 9 to 10, I rolled up to the gates of the factory and took a look inside. Hmm, I don't see much on this side. The workers must be inside. I'll go see if there's anything on the other side. As I got closer to the other side, I could see someone in a suit yelling at a robot. That suit, it must be Fat Cat. I looked into the yard and saw who he was shouting at. It was my mom. We know you helped that little robot escape. You're gonna work overtime until we find him. My mom didn't say anything. She was so brave. If I was going to help her though, I was going to need to find a way to get in. Just then, I heard some pistons moving and snuck over to where I heard the noise. As I peeked over the edge, I saw an opening in the wall of one of the guard towers, and a couple of rats were talking outside. What do you think of my secret door? Pretty nifty, huh? Now we can sneak out and skip work. Nobody will know. I still wasn't strong enough to fight, but knowing this will help me sneak in in the future. As I turned to leave though, my new track squeaked, getting the attention of the rats. Hey, what was that? The rats rushed over to where I was hiding, but thanks to my new speed, I was able to get away without them seeing me. Don't worry, Mom. I'll come back for you. On days 11 through 14, I was heading back to my base when I realized the sun was starting to set. I started putting together a small hut to protect me for the night when I was suddenly attacked by a giant mutated zombie. Holy cow, this guy is huge! I started to build even faster but couldn't focus as I had to keep running away from the zombie. If he keeps chasing me, I'm not going to be able to finish my house before the sun goes down. The sun kept going down and my battery soon started to beep, starting the 30 second countdown. Oh no, if I could just finish. As much as I tried, I couldn't finish the house. All I could do was jump into the unfinished build and hope for the best. My battery let out a final beep, and then I deactivated it. On day 15, I awoke to an unfamiliar face looking at me. Huh? Good morning, little friend. How are you feeling? Wh what happened? Who are you? Don't be alarmed. My name is Gary, and I'm here to help. I managed to grab you before that zombie could rip you to pieces. Thank you. You saved me. Whoa, and what's this? Did you upgrade my battery? I did. I wish I could do more, but I only had parts on hand to give you a 60 second charge when you're out of the sun. Wow, that's great. How did you know how to do that? The old man <sighs> sighed before heading into his story. My wife and I actually used to work at the factory building robots just like you. It was a clean, safe place for everyone, and the factory didn't produce the pollution that you see today. But then one day Fat Cat showed up and turned it into the mess you see now. He mistreats the robots and makes them work non-stop, which causes the factory to pollute the land. My wife and I had to flee for our safety. We planned to save the land from the factory, but my wife got sick and wanted to spend her last days growing her flower garden, but nothing would stay alive. She passed away soon after. I can't take Fat Cat down by myself, and everyone else is too afraid to help. But if you are willing to work with me, I think we can do it. I'm so sorry to hear about everything you've gone through. Fat Cat has taken enough from us. Let's take this guy down. On days 16 to 19, I left Gary's house and went to find a good place to build myself a base of operations. After a little bit of searching, I found a good spot to start building. I first cleared out the land, then got to work laying the foundation of the house. Then I put up walls to keep the mutants out, and finally, put up the base itself, making sure to leave windows in the ceiling for light to get in. Once that was finished, I filled the interior with everything I would need. Home sweet home. I hope this can be a place of safety for anyone who wants to help in our fight. That reminded me, what happened to that robot I saw in the caves? If I could just get a little stronger, I could fight my way past those mobs and see what was going on. On days 20 to 22, I woke up to sheep sounds outside my base. Oh nice, I could use their wool to build some things. I hurried to my base door and saw a bunch of mutant sheep outside. Oh right, I forgot everything here was green. Oh well, good to know my walls kept them out. I opened the door and started to fight them. I noticed a little mutant bunny was also joining in on the fight. How'd you get mixed up with these bad people? I finished them all off, no problem. After the fight, I could feel a power surge and I suddenly grew into a bigger robot. All right, I even gained four more hearts. I looked closer at my drill. It now had a diamond tip. Wow. I decided to go and give it a test. Looks like I can break blocks even faster than before. This is great. On days 23 to 27, I left my base to try and look for that robot in the cave. I had no idea if they would still be there, but maybe they could help in our fight against Fat Cat. Since I had just gotten my new upgrades, it felt like the right time to try again. Before I got back to the cave, I stopped by an abandoned mine shaft I had seen earlier. I'm going to need a way to transport the robot back so I can take these old rails to do it. I soon gathered up all the rails and found myself looking over the cliff to the cave. It looked like the robot was still in there, so I rushed down the hill and attacked the mutant pigs. I'm not gonna run away this time. They put up a good fight but my new abilities were too much for them. I fought as hard as I could and won. Finally, now I can get this robot out of here. Looks like they're deactivated. I quickly laid down some tracks, got the robot into a minecart, and started heading back to the base. On days 28 to 32, I arrived back at the base and I saw Gary had moved a lot of his supplies in. This will help us coordinate our plans much easier. Gary, I found this robot out in a cave. Do you think you can help her? Oh, I recognize this model. They call her Eve. 
Gary took a look and could immediately tell what was wrong. Yep, looks like her battery's fried. She must have been caught out in the wilderness. So what can we do? Do you think you can fix her? Not with the supplies I have on hand, but I know of a warehouse in the desert that used to have the components. I can tell you where to go to find it. Gary told me where to go, but before I left, I made some improvements to the base. I added a second layer to the walls and got to work on building Gary a house to work out of. Everything was looking great, and I even built a working drawbridge. No one is going to be breaking into here. On days 33 to 36, I was getting ready to leave when Gary stopped me and said he had something to ask me. Zozo, I had a question to ask you. Why are you so nice to everyone? Well, I wish I could take all the credit, but there's a robot I really really look up to has inspired me to be nice and always try and help. He's a sassy dude, but in the end, he always does the right thing. That's great. I think we should build a statue of this robot as a symbol to everyone, but they're still good in this world. That would be a great idea. I rushed out and was able to find some non-mutated sheep to use for the build. I led them back to the base and put them in a pen I had made. Then I got to work on the statue. I started with the base, then moved on to the statue itself. After a while, I had finished the first part. This is coming along great. I hope you're enjoying it so far too. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way, you'll never miss my next adventure. On days 37 to 40, I entered the desert to begin my journey to the warehouse. I can already feel the temperature rising, but that means lots of sunlight for my battery. As I made my way toward a small hill, I heard a strange sound up ahead. I wonder what that could be. As I came over the hill, I saw a group of mutant horses who attacked me. Ah, oh, this feels so wrong to be fighting horses. But you guys aren't as nice as your non-mutant brothers. After a tough fight, I was able to finish them off. I made it through, but these mobs were getting tougher. I'm gonna have to find a good spot to build a camp and craft some upgrades. Who knows what could be waiting for me at the warehouse. On days 41 to 43, I found a nice spot against the cliff full of ores. Whoa, look at all these ores. I can use these to give myself an upgrade. I also noticed there was a nice spot in the corner where I could build a camp. I quickly laid down some blocks for a foundation and then set up all the tools I would need. Then I worked on building the walls and finished it up with a glass ceiling. With the base set up, I headed over to the ore deposit and mined out some gold and some iron. I can use this iron to upgrade my armor, and I've got a special item in mind for the gold. I quickly smelted down all the iron in my blast furnace, then got started smelting all the gold. Then I made an iron chest plate, iron leggings, and an iron helmet. With the leftover iron, I decided to make myself an iron sword, axe, shovel, and hoe as well. To finish up, I then made a gold block, which I then mixed with some gold bars in my tire tracks. This let me upgrade my track to the Mark II version which gave me even more protection than before. Wow. I feel like I can take on anything now. Let's go find that warehouse. From days 44 to 49, I left my house to finally find the warehouse. After a while, I could finally see it. That must be it. I hope the parts we need are inside. As I entered the building, I could see the place was in ruins. This place has been completely picked apart. It looks like I might just have to head home and figure something else out. Hey you! A little rat came running over to me. What could he want? What do you want? Aren't you working with Fat Cat? No, no, not at all. You think rats want to work with cats? That giant rat has betrayed all rat kind, and I want to take him out. You think you can help? It sounds like we want the same thing, but how do I know I can trust you? You came here to this warehouse because you're looking for something, right? The giant rat cleaned all these warehouses out and moved everything to his base. I can show you where it is. I didn't know if I could trust him, but I agreed to work with him, so we headed off to the base. On days 50 to 53, the rat and I were traveling when a gazelle called out to us from a village. It looked like something was wrong. Hey, what's going on? She told us that a group of husks were attacking their village and they needed our help. If we would help them, she would give me something useful. I'm always happy to do what I can. She led us into the village and I charged at the husks. The rat even joined in on the fight. Maybe I could trust him after all. It wasn't long until we had eliminated all of the husks and stay down. The gazelle thanked us for our help and told us to follow her to the village workshop. When we arrived, she told me to take what was inside the chest. Whoa, are these blueprints on how to build a focus lens? If I can build that, then I could use it to redirect light into deep holes for mining. On days 54 to 57, I decided I would construct a lens and try to mine for diamonds. I first needed to gather some resources though, so I headed out into the desert. While I was on my way, I was suddenly attacked by a gang of mutant cats. These mutant animals are just getting weirder and weirder. I noticed there was a little mutant bird fighting along them too. A bird fighting with cats and rats are working with fat cat? This world is crazy. After beating the mutants, I got to work digging up some sand to make glass. Once I had collected all the sand I needed, I headed back to my base and started smelting the sand. Alrighty, time to start building this lens. I constructed two pillars for the base, then put the lens together using the glass I had just smelted. There was a shadow on the ground for now, but once I turned the lens, that should disappear. Okay, let's see if this thing works. I headed over to the activate button and gave it a press. As the lens rotated, I saw the shadow on the ground disappear. I quickly got to work digging a deep hole. It's nice to not have to worry about my battery running out. Once I started to hit bedrock, I built an angled mirror at the bottom so I could do some strip mining. The mirror was able to reflect enough light for me to be able to start mining to the side. Before long, I mined into a room full of diamonds. Amazing, this is just what I needed. I quickly mined all of the ores that I could and then headed out of the mine to craft. 
On days 58 to 62, I headed into my base to start crafting with the new materials I had just mined. I noticed that while I had been down in the mines, the rat had made himself a small hut off to the side of my base. Pretty cozy. Back at my crafting table, I made a diamond chest plate, helmet, and leggings. With the remaining diamonds, I also made myself a sword. Feels good to know this armor will keep me safer than before. The fight against giant rat will be a tough one. On day 63 to 66, I met the rat outside my base. Before we get going, is there anything else that I need to know? Yeah, you'll need all the support you can get. So anyone who is listening to this should subscribe and like the video. That ought to give you the strength you need. That's true. That would help a ton. The rat and I headed off to go fight the giant rat. We soon left the desert and entered the Badlands. As we made our way, we suddenly saw a pack of mutant wolves headed right at us. Mutant wolves now? This just doesn't even surprise me anymore. The rat and I launched into attack mode and fought against the pack. The rat was proving to be a good teammate and we were able to defeat them in no time. Nice job. I feel like we're making a great team. On day 67 to 70, we made our way to the edge of a cliff overlooking the giant rat's warehouse. Whoa, do you see that? Running into the warehouse was a huge pack of rats, all carrying different pieces of loot. We were definitely in the right place. All right, buddy, what's the best way in? I waited for the rat to reply, but he didn't say anything. Suddenly, I heard a bunch of squeaking and saw the pack of rats come screaming out of the building. They were headed right towards us. He had betrayed us. No, I thought you were my friend. Soon the rats were on me and I tried to fight them off. Oh no, there's so many of them. I don't know if I can get out of this one. I managed to take a few of them out, but it felt like a fight I couldn't win. And I was right. The rats injected me with something that depleted my battery, and I shut oh, down. No. While I was shut down, the rats pushed me down the hill, into the warehouse, and locked me away in a cell. On days 71 to 74, I started the day deactivated in the jail cell, when suddenly there was a huge explosion in the ceiling. The roof blew away, which let light come in, recharging my battery to full. As I turned back on, I saw Gary jump in from the ceiling. Gary, you're here! Come on, Zozo, let's get you out of here. Gary set some TNT by the jail doors and blew a hole in the bars. As we jumped through, we were attacked by the gang of rats. You guys aren't going to shut me down again. With Gary's help, we were able to fight off the horde of rats, but since we were out of the sun, my battery had started to deplete again. Don't worry, Zozo, I've got a solution to your battery problem. Gary took out his bazooka and blasted a hole in the roof, which let the sun come in. I quickly recharged. Let's take a look at these supply closets. I'm sure there's going to be some useful items. Gary and I started looking at all the crates, and there were tons of useful items. Now the right scraps. I can use this to upgrade my gear. I went ahead and grabbed the emeralds too, just for good measure. We continued moving through the warehouse, with Gary blowing holes in the roof as we went. In the next room, we found even more supplies. More netherite scraps and healing potions. Whoa, and check it out, gold nuggets. Just what I need to make some netherite ingots. We'd gotten some good loot, but we still needed to get parts to fix Eve. There was only one place we hadn't checked, Giant Rat's office. On day 75 to 78, we reached the Giant Rat's office. Watch out, Rat Man, we're coming in. I punched the door open and headed inside with Gary. Giant Rat was inside on his desk. His battery was on the wall behind him. Give us the battery or we're going to have to take you out too. This battery powers the one robot with the code to shut down Fat Cat's factory. You found it, didn't you? I know where your little base is. Once I've taken care of you, I'll destroy that little robot once and for all. We'll never let you destroy her. We're taking that battery and shutting the factory down. Just then, the giant rat leaped forward and started attacking Gary. We both pulled out our weapons and started to fight. Stay strong, Gary. We can beat this guy. The giant rat was really powerful, and my health bar got really low. But in the end, we were finally able to defeat him. We did it. Nice job, Gary. Let's grab the battery and get out of here. Gary? I turned and saw that Gary had been seriously wounded. Gary, you don't look so good. Come on, let's get you some help. There's no time, Zozo, but there's something you should know first. I was the one that hid the robot Eve away. She needed to be in a safe place. I thought telling you what code she contained would put you in too much danger. The more he spoke, the worse he looked. It's okay, it's okay. Maybe you should sit down. Gary slumped down against the wall. You've been a great friend, Zozo. I know you can do this. She would have loved you too. She? I had hoped to see your flowers bloom one more time. My wife. Her name was Eve. Gary put his head down and he was gone. Thank you for everything, Gary. I won't let you down. On day 79 to 84, I grabbed the battery off the wall and left the office. I couldn't believe Gary was gone. As I headed down the stairs, I heard a familiar voice. So now that the giant rat is gone, you need a new leader. And that leader should be me. This whole time that rat was just trying to take over the rats. I couldn't let this stand. You cost me everything. I charged down the stairs and attacked the rat. I was so angry I was able to defeat him in no time. All the other rats were so scared they didn't even try to get involved. I've got to get this battery back to Eve and shut down the factory. I headed out to return to the base. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base and put Eve's battery pack in. After a moment, she booted up and looked right at me. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Zozo. Gary told me that you should have code to shut down the Fat Cat factory. Is that true? That is correct. I would be happy to assist you with doing so. 
Where is Gary? I would love to see my creator again. He didn't make it, but he would have wanted us to work together. I see. I'm sorry to hear it, but I agree. Gary and Eve are my best friends, and I'm sure we will be good friends too. I agree, which reminds me, do you think he could help me with something? Eve and I headed outside, and I got her help finishing the robot statue. Finishing the statue gave me the courage to be brave, brave like my robot hero, and brave like Gary. Before long, the statue was complete. This looks amazing. Thanks for all of your help, Eve. From there, I went to work on building Eve a place to stay as well. I made sure to give her everything she needed to be comfortable. Once I finished the outside, I worked on decorating the inside with all the tools she'll need. With everything complete, I just had one more task to finish. Using the nether scraps and gold I had collected, I made a netherite ingot. Then, I used that to upgrade my diamond sword. Nothing's gonna stop us now. On days 90 to 94, I decided I should go through Gary's room to see if there was anything he may have had to help us in the final fight. As I was looking around, I came across Gary's diary. His last entry confirmed his plan to follow me to the warehouse. Under that entry was a note meant for me. If you're reading this, I didn't make it. The last thing I need to tell you is that Eve knows how to do something special. She can also craft a battery for you. With such a battery, you can function without the need for sunlight. Wow, what an amazing gift. I'll go ask her. I headed back out and found Eve. I asked her about the battery. Let me check my data logs. Scanning. Oh yes, I found the recipe. Right this way. Eve grabbed some supplies from a chest, then headed over to the crafting table. Moments later, we headed outside, and she tossed the new battery pack to me. I put it in. I immediately felt a power surge and turned into a giant robot. My battery pack showed it was upgraded too. Whoa, look at me. I feel great. Fat Cat isn't going to know what hit him. On days 95 to 96, I headed outside to meet up with Eve. Today's the day, Eve. Let's go save the world. Eve and I took off in the direction of the factory. After a while, we arrived near the edge. Looking ahead, I could see some rats patrolling the perimeter. Once they had passed, we snuck up to the hidden entrance I had seen before. If we hit this button, it will let us inside. I hit the button and Eve and I snuck inside. Once we were in, we didn't see anyone else around. It looks like the coast is clear. Let's see if we can get to the robots inside. As we ran across the open space, we heard a squeak. A single rat guard was standing there. Maybe he can tell us where the robots are. Hey, don't move and we won't hurt you. Where are all the robots? Fag Cat gathered them all in the incinerator room. He's threatening to melt them all down because one lady robot keeps trying to lead revolts. That sounds like my mom. Thanks for the tip. We can't risk you giving us away though, so I'm sure you won't mind us locking you up. Mm -hmm. Eve shot a rat net at him, which put him in a rat sack. I picked him up and put him in my safety compartment. Come on, let's get to the incinerator room. On days 97 to 98, we entered the incinerator room and saw my mom dangling above the lava pit. We have to save her. Hang on, mom, we'll get you out. I looked across the room and saw a lever that controlled the device, but then I noticed a rat on the other side of the room watching us. He ran towards the lever. Oh no you don't. I ran toward the rat while Eve started shooting her laser cannon. It was a close one, but we managed to take him out before he could pull the switch. Zozo, is it really you? Mom, I'm so glad to see you're still alive. Where are all the other robots? We have to get everyone out. Fat Cat is keeping them locked in the next room over. I can get them out, but I don't know how we'll get out of here unnoticed. There's a secret entrance that we use to get in. You guys can use that to escape. Thank you, Zozo, and be safe. Fat Cat will be in the main factory. I love you. Good luck. On day 99, we left the incinerator room and made our way towards the main factory. On our way toward the factory doors, we heard a terrifying voice. Well, 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 if it isn't little Zozo. Fat Cat was looking down at us from the factory's second story window. Fat Cat, the madness has to stop. We're shutting down this factory one way or another. We'll see about that rat pack attack. Just then, the largest pack of rats I had ever seen came charging at us. This must have been every rat in the factory. Time to see how good my upgrades really were. Bring it on, you little creeps. Eve and I threw everything we had at the rats. With my new abilities, these rats didn't stand a chance. Eve shot them with her laser cannon, and I hit them back with my new gear. Before long, we had managed to take most of them out, which made the remaining rats all run away in fear. Yeah, you better run. Eve and I walked up to the factory door, but before going in, I turned to talk to Eve. Eve, I could really use your help in this fight, but we can't risk you getting hurt. We need you to stay safe so you can shut down the factory. I understand. And Zozo, there's something else I want to say before you go in there. Yeah, what is it? I know you'll make it through this, and I... Just think everyone should subscribe so they can see what you'll do next. Wow, that really means a lot to me, Eve. Thank you. I'll see you when it's all done. On day 100, I entered the factory and saw Fat Cat looking down at me from the second story balcony. It's over, Zozo. I have the high ground. What? This little revolution ends today. I don't care how many rats you kill or how many robots you free. I'll never shut this place down. And just like that, he attacked. As we exchanged blows, it was clear to me that he was way stronger than I could have thought. 
You could have had a great life working in my factory and making me rich, but it looks like it's over for you. My hearts were getting really low. It didn't look like I was going to make it. But just then, a laser came out of nowhere and hit Fat Cat. Eve! Eve came in and started fighting with Fat Cat, which gave me a second to use my potions and heal up. Then I got back into the fight. You're in trouble now, Fat Cat. As I started to fight, I was able to distract Fat Cat and lead him away. While I did that, Eve snuck around to the main factory shutoff and input her code. No, my factory! Suddenly, Fat Cat stopped moving and a tiny cat popped out. He was a cat in a robot suit this whole time. There he is, boys! Get him! The pack of rats appeared and chased Fat Cat out of the factory. We did it, Eve! I'm sure the world will return back to normal in no time. Now let's go find my mom. We have a lot of catching up to do. I think Gary would have been proud. On day one, I spawned in as a baby goat. Oh, I'm a tiny little goat. And oh hoo hoo, look how high I can jump. Let's see how fast I can climb this hill. I hopped on over and that's when I realized I could climb the sides of the hills too. Oh yeah, look at me go. I was feeling pretty good about myself, hip hopping around, when I was suddenly attacked by a raptor. A dinosaur? What century is this? I didn't have time to worry about that though, because I only had four hearts. The problem was, I had nowhere to run. That's when I noticed I had some sort of special ability. Headbutt. All right, I'll give it a try. I swung my head head and sent the raptor flying straight off the cliff. Sayonara! I headed down the hill. What was a dinosaur doing around here? Suddenly there was a rustling up ahead and a whole pack of raptors were coming right at me. More of them? I don't think I can take on a whole pack. They were closing in fast so I jumped up the side of the hill and started to climb. They couldn't follow me straight up the side of a cliff. Better luck next time boys! The raptor snarled at me and left. I kept watch for the rest of the day. Who knew if those raptors would attack again? On day two I headed down off the cliff. I had to be careful just in case there were any dinosaurs lurking around. Just then, I heard a cry out in the distance. Help! I rushed off toward the sound and saw a little baby goat getting attacked by a couple of foxes. Hang on, buddy. I charged at the foxes with my head, knocking them back. No one was going to be picking on any goats today. They weren't very tough, and I was able to knock them both out. That was a close one. No problem. What's your name? You can call me Billy. That makes sense. Come on, Billy. I know a spot that's safe from all the meanies out here. Billy and I headed back over to my little cave, climbing up the mountain. This will be a safe place for us to stay for the night, but I think we can make it a little nicer. I ran outside and cut down some wood, then used it to make a crafting table. Then I used the crafting table to make a wooden axe. Now I can get all the wood I need. After I'd collected all the wood I needed, I started clearing out the cave, filling it with a nice wood floor. Then I added all the things Billy and I would need for a good starter base. Hopefully nothing would attack us in the night. On day three, Billy and I had decided we would look for supplies, but first, I needed to make some stone tools. Using my crafting table, I made all the tools we could possibly need. Hopefully we could find a good food source. All right, Billy, let's get out there and see what we can find. While we were looking for any resources that might help, we were mostly hoping to find food because we knew we would be getting hungry sooner rather than later. Luckily for us, we soon saw a farm in the distance. Okay, I don't see anyone. If we're really sneaky, we can probably take just a little bit without getting caught. Billy and I got right to harvesting, collecting as much food as we could. Why, hello over there. Uh-oh, it was the farmer. We had to get out of there. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a moment. I don't mind if you eat my crops. In fact, eat as much as you want. Really? No one has ever been this nice to us. Yes, well, there aren't very many friendly animals around here these days. Something dangerous out there seems to be making them disappear. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say it's the dinosaurs taking them all out. Dinosaurs? Huh. Well, I suppose that must be it. If that's the case, why don't you two stay in my barn for safety? We agreed and followed him into his barn. There were some nice hay bales to lay on. I was a little unsure because our cave seemed pretty safe, but at least there was food and someone to look out for us. The sun set and we put our heads down for the night. On days four through five, Billy and I woke up in the back of the cart, pulled by the farmer. Hey, what's going on? The farmer didn't respond and kept looking ahead. That's when I realized we were all tied up and couldn't move. Where are you taking us? The farmer continued to ignore me. After a little while longer, we arrived at a small clearing. The farmer took us out and tied us to a post. Without saying a word, he got back on his horse and left. I've got a bad feeling about this. Just then, I heard a stick break and saw a pack of raptors walking toward us. We had no way to run. It looks like it's the end for us, Billy. Suddenly, the ground began to shake and there was the sound of heavy thuds. The raptors ran away. What's going on? Is it an earthquake? It was worse. A huge T-Rex came stomping around the corner, and he had on some kind of weird looking hat. Aha! Uh -huh. My dinner is served. You look delicious. This dinosaur could talk. We had to escape. The T-Rex lunged at us, but we jumped out of the way, causing him to break our rope instead. Hurry, Billy! Run! We took off into the woods. Hopefully we could escape. On day six through eight, we were still running for our lives. The T-Rex was hot on our tails. As we came through a thick section of trees, we managed to slip through, leaving the T-Rex behind them. 
I think we lost him. It was wishful thinking, though, as he came stomping around the other side of the trees. Our chase soon led us to a river, and I hurried and swam across. Billy was still just a baby, though, and his tiny legs couldn't swim very fast. It's okay, Zozo. Save yourself. Keep swimming, Billy. I won't leave you behind. Ugh, I hate getting wet. The T-Rex was so close, and I wasn't sure if he would make it. But at the last moment, he jumped onto shore, and we continued to run. We soon came bursting out of the forest, running across an open plain. Billy kept falling into small ponds, which was always a close call. Let's go, Billy. Maybe we can lose him in the trees. We ran into a purple forest, but it was no use. The T-Rex was still right behind us. Man, this guy must be really hungry. Come on, I have an idea. We circled back into the forest from before, and I headed toward a ravine I had seen earlier. A large tree had fallen across it, so Billy and I hurried and ran across. Before the T-Rex could cross, though, I quickly cut the log, stopping him in his tracks. Nah, you silly goats. You got away this time, but no one can outsmart me now. I'll find you soon enough. The T-Rex turned and ran off. How are we going to survive now? On days 9 through 10, Billy and I were running back to the base as fast as we could. It didn't feel like there was anyone out here that we could trust. Soon, we had arrived back at our cliffside base. Well, Billy, looks like this is going to be our home for the future. Let's fix it up. I got right to work, making our base even cooler than before. I cleared out even more space than before and lined the inside with lots of wood. I also gave us all the equipment we'd need, beds, furnaces, and crafting tables. As far as I knew, we were the only animals that could climb up steep cliffs, so no one else was going to be climbing into our base. So check it out. What do you think of the base? What part do you like the best? With the base completed, I decided to head over to some nearby caves to mine some iron. Luckily, I was able to quickly find some, so I mined it out. I also found some coal, which I was going to need to smelt the iron. I hurried back to the base and got right to work, smelting down all of the iron ore into iron ingots. I then used those to make myself a full set of iron armor, and also used them to make an iron sword, a pickaxe, axe, shovel, and hoe. This is all going to be good for me, but I think Billy is going to need some armor too. With some of the leftover iron, I made Billy some of his own goat armor. He's gonna love this. I brought it down to his base and tossed it out to him. He could barely contain his excitement. We're ready for anything now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get that farmer back. On days 11 to 12, I left the base to go get that farmer. He was going to have a lot of explaining to do for leaving us tied to a post as dinosaur dinner. As I was making my way through the forest, I heard a howl and was suddenly attacked by a pack of wolves. Why is everyone here so mean to me? I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. It's a good thing I had just upgraded my gear though, as I was able to defeat the wolves with no trouble at all. Soon, I was back at the farm and noticed it looked abandoned. Where is that farmer? Don't tell me he's hiding. I then checked the farmhouse and saw the farmer inside, packing his bags. What did you think you were doing? Leaving us to be eaten like that. I hid the farmer and he started to fight back. He clearly wasn't ready for a fight though. Hang on just a second there, please don't hurt me. And why wouldn't I? You weren't very nice to me. Okay, okay, let me explain. Start talking, Slick. What's up with the T-Rex? That T-Rex is crazy. I don't know how he got here in our time or how he learned to talk, but he's been forcing me to feed him all my animals. If I didn't give him more, he was gonna eat me. I decided I couldn't do it anymore though, and I was gonna flee. Time to start myself a vegetable garden somewhere peaceful. I promise I'm not a danger to anyone. I could tell he was sorry for what he had done, so even though I was still upset, I decided to forgive him and let him go. I left as he planted some vegetables I could use later. The farmer was no longer a threat, but what was I going to do about this T-Rex? On days 13 to 15, I arrived back at our base and headed up to Billy's room. When I entered, I barely recognized the place. Whoa, Billy, you've got a lot of work done. Your room looks awesome. Thanks, Zozo. I also thought it'd be fun if we built a special statue. Here, take this wool. I'll show you what to do. Billy and I headed out and got started on the statue. Billy was really excited about what we were building, and I thought it was coming along great. At least, as far as I could tell, it was pretty great. We soon finished the first part. Can you tell what we're building? I'm not really sure quite yet. I jumped down from the statue, and as I was walking, I was attacked by a bunch of spiders. Oh, look, another mob who wants to hurt me. Stay back, you punks. These guys weren't very tough, and I managed to take them out in just a few hits. Uh-oh, I can hear some more spiders in that cave. I better take them out, too. I entered the cave, and sure enough, there were more spiders. One of these spiders was different, though, and had blue eyes. The spiders were pretty mad at me, and they hurt a lot. But if I could survive a T-Rex attacking me, I could fight these guys off, too. I managed to beat them both down. When the blue-eyed guy disappeared, he left behind something interesting. Poisonous essence. Hmm, I'm not sure what I'll do with this, but I'll have to hang on to it for now. Just then, I heard more spider noises echoing from the cave. I headed in deeper. What kind of monster would be waiting for me? On day 16 to 19, I was making my way deeper into the cave when I came across a bunch of brown terracotta. Huh, I don't know what all of this is doing down here, but Billy said we'd need it for the statue. I eagerly mined up all of the terracotta. Who knew when we'd be able to find more? As I scooped up the rest of the terracotta, I heard those spider noises again. Well, let's go down a little deeper, just to take a look. I soon arrived at the very bottom of a deep cave that was full of spider webs. I turned around and saw there was a huge spider on the ceiling. Okay, just stay calm, don't panic. Suddenly, the spider attacked. Spiders, why did it have to be spiders? This big hairy beast did a lot of damage, and I wasn't 
wasn't sure if I was going to survive. If I could get the right hits in, I just might make it. I swung my sword as hard as I could and finally was able to take it down. Just then, I felt my strength begin to grow and I leveled up into a bigger goat and I've gained four more hearts. I took a closer look at my headbutt ability and noticed I had an even stronger knockback power and I could jump higher too. I hurried back to my house. I had an idea of what I could do with the poisonous essence. I walked back up to my crafting table and by combining the essence with my iron sword, I crafted a spider sword. Tomorrow I'm heading off to find the T-Rex. On days 20 to 22, I left my base to go find the T-Rex. I wasn't quite ready to fight him, but surely he had a base somewhere. If I could find his base, maybe I could find a way to defeat him. As I walked across the land, I heard a noise up in the distance. Oh, you wild raptors, get away from me. The group of raptors were attacking what looked to be a scientist. He needed my help. Watch out, I'm coming in. I leapt into action and started to fight off the raptors. I was stronger and had better gear, so these raptors didn't know what hit them. They were a feisty bunch, but I was able to knock them all out. Oh my goodness, aren't you just a marvelous little animal? Oh, well thanks. Who are you and what are you doing all the way out here? There's all kinds of strange things going on. The name's Faraday, and uh, yes, I am aware of these things. They are actually all my fault. Your fault? What do you mean? The scientist began to explain. You see, I'm not actually from this time. I am from the future. I invented a time machine helmet that let me travel all the way back to dinosaur times. I ran across the land. I felt so cool knowing that I was the first human to ever step foot on the land. Later that day though, I sat down to rest and a little raptor came and scooped my helmet onto his head. This wouldn't have been the biggest problem, but that T-Rex came along, flipped the raptor into the air, and the helmet landed on his head. Thing is though, my helmet also makes the user smarter, which is why the T-Rex can talk. I had an old prototype helmet that I used to chase the T-Rex through time, but it broke when we got to this present. Luckily, the T-Rex seems pretty happy to be here since there is plenty of easy food for him. Wow, that is not the story I was expecting to hear when I woke up today. So what can we do to get the helmet back? I have some ideas, but I haven't been able to test any of them out yet. That T-Rex's sidekicks keep attacking me. He must have brought them through time with him. Well, we've got a safe base built into a hill. How about you come live with us? You can do your research in peace there. That would be terrific. On days 23 to 26, I got right to work, building Faraday a lab at our base. There was all kind of technology that he wanted added, and it took a lot of hard work to get it right. But in the end, I was able to make him everything he would need to continue doing research. When it was complete, Faraday went and took a look around to make sure everything was in working order. Later on, I hopped in the elevator and took it for a ride myself. It was kind of fun riding in the elevator and getting to look out the window, but I'd still rather climb up the side of cliffs. I met Faraday in the front of the lab, and he told me how happy he was to finally get started. It was going to take some time for him to figure things out, but he said I should make sure I upgrade my gear for when we finally face off against the T-Rex. On days 27 to 31, I decided that I could use some more upgrades that could keep me safe from attack. Faraday told me there was a special item I could get from bears that could help me with this. Bears are super scary. I sure hope nothing goes wrong as I do this. I headed to a nearby forest and soon saw a small group of bears. With my spider sword in hand, I attacked. Very nice to meet you, sir. The bear didn't seem very happy to beat me and swung at me with their heavy claws. They were pretty tough and it was a hard fight, but in the end, I was able to take him out. There were a couple of other bears nearby too, which I was able to quickly defeat without too much trouble. That's when I saw one of them had dropped what I was looking for. Oh look, steadfast spikes. This makes it harder for bad guys to knock me back. Awesome. I then noticed there were some fruit trees nearby, so I ran through the trees and collected as much fruit as I could. Fruits are the best. I always try to eat them when I can. After I collected the fruits, I decided to do some exploring. As I crossed an empty field, I saw a small house in the distance. Let's see who lives here. I knocked on the door and a raccoon was inside. Who's out there? Hi, I just wanted to see who lived here and make sure you knew about the T-Rex running around. A T-Rex? Big deal. I have a bigger problem. A bigger problem? What could that be? My magic coal is stolen. Your what? My magic coal. It's the best thing I've ever found. Do you mean stole? How I got it isn't important. Do you think you can help me or not? Sure, sure, I'll help. The raccoon explained that a coyote had grabbed it off his doorstep when he wasn't looking and told me where to go to find him. I nodded and headed off for the camp. On days 32 to 35, I soon arrived at the coyote's base. This place is way bigger than the raccoon made it sound. I walked in and was immediately attacked by a pack of wolves. Relax, guys, I'm just looking for a piece of coal. The wolves didn't care and continued to attack. With my attack, I was able to defeat them before they could do too much damage. Now where could this magic coal be? What does that even look like? I kept looking through the base, fighting off the occasional wolf here and there. Eventually, I reached the top of the base as I finished up the rest of the wolves. Hey, who do you think you are coming into my house and messing with my guards? I'm here for Mr. Raccoon. You stole something of his and I'm here to get it back. <laughs> that little raccoon is such a loser. He just gets stuff out of the trash. He's weird, so I like being mean to him. Well, that's no way to treat someone for being different. The coyote and I started to fight. This guy was so mean. It's not okay to talk about people like that. By using my spider sword, I was able to poison him, which was bringing down his health. You're not as tough as you think you are. The coyote and I kept going at each other until at long last, I hit him with the final blow and took him out. 
That's when I saw he had dropped the magic coal. I don't know what's so special about this, but I better get it back to that raccoon. With the coal in my pocket, I hurried out of the base and headed back toward the raccoon's house. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at the raccoon's house with his magic coal. After he came out of his house, I tossed it over to him. Woo, my magic coal. I'm so happy to see it again. Thank you, thank you. No problem. I'm just happy I could help. You have done the greatest thing for me. Here, I have something that you might be interested in. The raccoon threw out an interesting looking piece of tech. I don't know what it's for, but maybe that scientist friend of yours could use it. By the way, I get around these parts quite a bit, so if you're ever in need of information, let me know. I can probably help. I thanked him and turned to head back to the base. I wondered if Faraday would know something about this tech. On days 40 to 43, I arrived back to the base and headed up and into the science lab. I saw Faraday working in his lab and knocked on the window. Zozo, it's been a while. How are things going? Really good. While I was out exploring, I came across this strange piece of tech. Do you know anything about it? My Lanta, that's part of the teleportation helmet the T-Rex has. Without this, he's not able to travel through time. Well, that's good, right? It means we have a chance to stop him before he can ruin other timelines. Precisely. I've been doing some research of my own. Let me check my notes here. Faraday went over to his computers and printed out some notes. Ah, uh, yes. I am able to make the needed repairs, but there's a special element I need to do them. That sounds easy enough. Do you know where I can get them? I do, but the catch is that you have to defeat a rather nasty mob to get it. Faraday went on to explain where I needed to go to find them. Hopefully it's not too much of a fight. On days 44 to 49, I headed into the mystical forest Faraday had told me about. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a heavy creeper. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. I swung at him and managed to knock him out. It looked like he had dropped something, which I picked up. Creeper shards? Was this what Faraday was looking for? I better keep looking around. I kept going through the forest when suddenly a bunch of the creepers began attacking me and exploding. Keep it together, guys. Jeez. I managed to fight my way through the explosions with my ears ringing in my head. I soon stumbled upon a cave. Okay, he did mention it might be in a cave. I'll take a look. I headed into the cave and was attacked by a couple of spiders. I hit them with my spider sword. How do you like a taste of your own medicine? The spiders were soon destroyed and I continued down the cave. It kept going deeper and deeper until I saw something terrifying ahead. Okay, this has got to be it. What is this thing? The earth golem made a terrible sound as it tried to hit me. He definitely didn't like me stomping around in his cave. With his giant arms, he knocked me down to half a heart. My spider sword had poisoned him and I was able to land the final blow. Yes, I got him. As he disappeared, I noticed that he dropped something. This looks like some kind of strange display? This must be what Faraday is after. Just then, I felt that familiar power flow into me, and I turned into a bigger and stronger goat. Looks like I've got 13 hearts now, too. While I was down there, I also got to work mining out the diamonds in the wall. No wonder this guy didn't want anyone down here. It was filled with good stuff. That should be everything. Let's get this back to Faraday and see what he can do with it. On days 50 to 53, I returned back to the base and headed into the lab. Faraday was hard at work and was very excited to see that I had made it back. I believe this is what you were searching for? Oh, ho, Zo! Zozo, you beautiful being! This is going to work perfect! I was feeling pretty good about myself, so I tossed in the creeper shards as well. And what do you think of this? Zozo, this is a ground creeper toenail. Please, never give this to me again. Oh, uh, my bad. Faraday said it would take him a few days to get the next project put together, so I headed back up to the base to craft some diamond armor. I decided I could use a full set of armor, so I made that. Then I went ahead and made an entire set of tools. I always felt a little bit more safe after making new diamond gear. With my armor upgraded, I headed outside to go and do some more work on the statue. I had the terracotta I had collected before, so I wanted to make some good progress. So what do you think about the second part? Think you can still guess what it's going to be? I then headed back over to my base. This place could use some more improvements. I decided I wanted to add another level atop the cliff. We hadn't been attacked by any mobs, and I was pretty sure nothing was going to get to us. I was pretty proud of what I was able to build, and thought it looked really cool. This is a nice house, but it is pretty big. I think I should go get Mr. Raccoon and invite him to live here. It's not safe out there. On days 54 to 57, I was heading across the field when I saw that the raccoon's house had been destroyed. As I got closer, I saw him lying in the center of his destroyed house. He was clearly hurt. Oh no, who did this to you? It was those raptors. I guess some of the wolves told them I sent you to get my magic coal back from the coyote, and they attacked me without warning. I'm sorry, I can't help feeling like this is all my fault. Surely I can get you something to save you. It's too late. They took everything I have. And don't worry, it's not your fault. Thanks for being the nice one who was willing to stand up for me. And just like that, the raccoon fell over and disappeared. But before I could do anything else, I heard someone come up behind me. Well, look who it is, boys. You, you have a time traveling helmet. How? The big boss man made it for me. He's real smart now and is good with all them technologies. Speaking of which, we know you're hiding that little science man. Hand him over and we'll let you little goats live. Why would I let you guys have him? You're just going to hurt him or try to get him to make more helmets. We don't need him to make more helmets. Mr. Rex is gonna make all of us our own. Then you won't be able to do 
nothing. You can make as many helmets as you want, but if there's no one to wear them, that's not gonna do you much good, is it? Well, what do you mean, no one to wear them? Can't you see all my boys here? All that technology on your head and you're still not very smart, are you? I jumped forward and swung at the raptor, knocking him back. There were a lot of them, but I couldn't let them get away with everything. They hurt my friend, and they wanted to hurt everyone else I knew. You guys are gonna pay for what you've done. I managed to knock out all of the raptors one by one until only the leader was left. Boy, you're crazy. I'm getting out of here. Get back here, you coward. I chased the raptor into the forest, but unfortunately he managed to get away in the trees. I had to hurry back to Faraday. We were running out of time. On days 58 to 62, I returned back to the base and headed for the lab. I knocked on the window, and Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, what is it? You look worried. The T-Rex has figured out how to make his own helmets and is trying to give them to a whole army of raptors. That, and they hurt one of my new friends. Oh dear, I'm so sorry to hear it. I do have some good news for you though. I haven't got the time travel fixed yet, but I built a tracker into this helmet that will lead you to anyone who has a helmet of their own. Perhaps now we may be able to find their base and hit them where it hurts. I put the helmet on and started it up. Right away I could see a map that showed several X's on it. They must have split up. This is going to be a massive help in our hunt to track them down. Just then, Billy came walking up to us. Zozo, I think you should go for the raptor first. Then we can focus on the T-Rex. Those raptors could be out there, hurting even more innocent animals. That's a good point. Plus, it'll be easier to take down the T-Rex if his sidekicks are gone. I'm on it. On day 63 to 66, I decided that if I was going to fight the raptor, I needed to beef up my gear. I had nearly defeated him last time, so he'd be stronger when we met next. I headed across the land to a lavender field to get what I needed. Rumor says there's alexandrite ore here, which is even stronger than diamonds. I headed into the field and soon found some alexandrite ore. I mined it up as fast as I could. I couldn't believe I found it so quickly. With my pockets full of ores, I took a look around and saw a big sign on a hill. Oh, that reminds me. Don't forget to sub to the channel, otherwise you'll miss our next adventure together. Sometime later, I had arrived back at the base and headed over to the crafting table. With the new ore, I was able to make myself a new helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. I went ahead and equipped everything. Let's get that tracking system booted up and take down that raptor. On day 67 to 70, I stepped outside my house and booted up the tracker. Okay, I can see two X's on the map. Looks like they're still separated. This one looks a little closer to the raccoon's place, so I'm guessing that's the raptor. I headed down from my base and off into the forest. The X was still pretty far away, so I made sure to stop and check every now and then. Oh, it looked like it moved. I better hurry so I can catch up to them. I kept going in the direction of the X, passing through some pretty impressive landscapes. It was too bad there were so many mean dinosaurs about because the land was really beautiful. I stopped and checked my map one more time. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty close and that they might be in some kind of structure. It must be their base. I kept making my way there when suddenly I saw a fortress off in the distance. I could see a bunch of raptors roaming around and a lot of them had helmets on. Uh-oh, looks like they've made more helmets. I better get in there and fast. On days 71 to 74, I charged up to the base and attacked the guards. They had helmets of their own, but they didn't seem to be very smart. The T-Rex clearly wasn't very good at making them yet. I defeated the guards and headed into the base. There were even more raptors in here. Where's your leader? I cut through the raptors using my spider sword and other attacks. They didn't stand a chance. I had to hurry though. If they figured out how to make the helmets perfectly, we'd be in a world of hurt. I had finally taken out all of the raptors in the courtyard when I noticed they had a storage shed nearby. I started opening the different containers to see if they had anything good. I grabbed some of their supplies, but also saw there were some raptor teeth nearby. Oh, I know just the thing I can make with this. Using the crafting table, I managed to make a raptor tooth sword. Let's see how they like fighting against themselves. On day 75 to 78, I went to go find the raptor leader when he jumped out and hit me. Ouch! Get back here! I chased him into the base and down a long flight of stairs. We soon reached an open room. Who do you think you are? One single goat trying to take down a whole base of raptors? This ends here. Get him, boys! Suddenly, all the raptors in the room started to attack. This guy was no leader. He just wanted to make everyone do his dirty work for him. You'd think with all these smart helmets, you guys would actually have some kind of strategy for this fight. The raptors were swarming in on me, but I was able to keep them back using all of my weapons. Their leader watched as I finished taking out all of his henchmen. Why don't you come down here and fight me yourself? Or are you too scared? Scared? Ain't nobody calling me scared. The raptor leader jumped forward and started swinging. It turns out he was actually pretty tough. I had learned a lot through all of my fights though, and nothing was going to make me back down. He had to pay for what he did to my raccoon friend. I hit him as hard as I could and could see he would soon be defeated. Heh, <laughs> it doesn't matter that you beat me. You'll never beat Mr. Rex. He's gonna fix the time machine soon, and then there'll be hundreds of raptors and other dinosaurs here. You won't stand a chance. And just like that, he was defeated. He was right though. If we don't stop the T-Rex, we're all gonna be someone's dinner. On day 79 to 84, I was heading back to my base when I saw a nearby cave. It wouldn't hurt to get some more resources, so let's see what we can find. As I approached the cave, I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of mushroom pigs. Oh, I should have known I would run into something like you here. I quickly knocked them out and headed into the cave, fighting some more mushroom pigs along the way. They weren't very strong. There were a lot of them. That's when I noticed there was a bunch of redstone in here. I'm not sure what I can use this for yet, but maybe there's some kind of creative 
primitive build Faraday can make with it. I continued into the cave, collecting as much redstone as I could find. There were also a bunch of mushroom pigs, which I quickly knocked out of the way. At the very end of the cave, there was a room filled with an insane amount of redstone. Oh yeah, if I ever need more, I know just where to get it. I headed back out of the cave toward my base. I needed to talk to Faraday. Hopefully he had made some progress on the helmet. On days 85 to 89, I had arrived back at the base and headed down into the lab. I gave Faraday a knock on the window and he came out to meet me. I told him all about what had happened with the raptors and how the T-Rex was starting to make even more helmets. Yes, yes, that is very concerning. I have been working on some updates as well though. Let me show you. While you look for that, I also collected some redstone. Maybe it can help. I tossed out the redstone I had gathered when suddenly there was a crackling sound coming from Faraday's pocket. What's this? The substance seems to be reacting with the updated helmet I made. The redstone? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Oh, redstone is what you call it. This material must have disappeared before my time. Are you able to get more of this? I have an idea. Oh yeah, I can definitely get more. I'll be right back. On days 90 to 94, I headed back to the redstone cave. He said he needed more. I'll get him more. I got right to work, mining out a bunch of the redstone. There was no way this wouldn't be enough. It took a long time, but I finally gathered up all the redstone we would need. Soon I was back in the lab and gave Faraday a knock on the window. As always, he was excited to meet me. You've brought me more redstone, I presume? Oh yeah, this should be more than enough to do whatever you're thinking. I tossed all the redstone I had gathered on over to him. Excellent! Here's the upgraded helmet. This blue shield on top should protect you from the effects of the redstone. Faraday then tossed out a bunch of redstone power balls. Now that we've combined these with with the redstone, they'll pack a powerful punch against anyone wearing a helmet. In fact, it should disable it, at least for a moment. That'll be awesome! This is going to be a lifesaver, I'm sure. Ah yes, speaking of which, there is a special strength ability I've programmed in it as well, but it will only work once, so be sure to only use it when you really need it. I nodded and thanked him for all of his hard work. It's a good thing he got trapped in our time too, otherwise we'd never get out of this mess. On days 95 to 97, I decided I should upgrade the base one more time, before heading out to face the T-Rex. Billy was still young and I wanted to make sure he had a safe place to live, just in case things went sideways. Once I had expanded the base a little more, I grabbed Billy and we went outside to work on the last part of the statue. This was a tough one to build, but I think it looks really cool. It would certainly scare off anyone who thinks that they're tougher than us, that is. Soon, we had completed the statue. I was pretty proud of everything we had built so far. I still had a lot of ideas for the future though. What part of the builds were your favorite? On day 98, I stepped outside the base to have a chat with Billy. All right, Billy, I'm headed off to fight the T-Rex. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Good luck, Zozo. But before you go, there was something I wanted to say. That sounds important. What is it? I just think that everyone needs to subscribe. Otherwise, we'll never win. Oh, that is important. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, as that will give us the strength to win the fight. Billy headed back inside, and I booted up the tracking system. All right, I can see him on the map. It's showtime. I headed off in the direction of the T-Rex. It was now or never. On day 99, I had made it to the edge of the T-Rex's base. He definitely couldn't have built a base like this without some intelligence. This guy isn't going to be like the Raptors. This guy's for real. I made my way closer and took a look up at the tower. There's no time to waste. I'm coming for you, Rexy. I charged into the base and entered the inside of the tower where the T-Rex was waiting for me. I've been waiting for you, Zozo. Mm, that sounds kind of awkward, just standing here, alone, in a tower, waiting for me. Nah, I don't have time for your nonsense. Obviously, I've been doing other things. Oh yeah? Like what? Being sad I took out all of your friends? My friends? Please. There were more dinosaurs here too, but I got hungry. You ate all of the other dinosaurs? You truly are a monster. <laughs> Say what you want, but it doesn't matter. This helmet is nearly fully operational. I can bring dinosaurs in any time I want. And soon, I'll be able to jump time myself. That wasn't good to hear. I had to hurry and take action before he could do anything else. If you think you're so tough, you'll have to get through me first. That's the idea. The T-Rex lunged at me and we started to fight. If I was going to save the future, the time to do so was now. The T-Rex lived up to his reputation, hitting me with some hard hits. It hurt, and my health was dropping fast. Oh, I can't let this guy keep getting these hits on me. I'm not going to last long like this. I refocused and started to get in some more hits of my own. I think he was really surprised by how strong I was, especially when I would hit him with my headbutt. You think you can defeat me? Let me show you what real power is. Suddenly, two portals opened up and more dinosaurs came flying in. No, not the time travel. These dinosaurs were insane. I swung my sword and managed to take them out, but soon there were even more coming in. Don't you see? You can take down as many dinosaurs as you want, but I will always have the upper hand. He was right. I couldn't keep fighting off time traveling dinosaurs forever. What could I do? 
Oh, wait a second. What am I doing? If I want to stop the time travel, I need to disable his helmet. I reached for the power balls Faraday had given me and started to throw them. As they hit the T-Rex, I could see his helmet start to spark as he ran around in circles. Oh, what is going on? This is it. I've got to use that one-time strength boost. If there was ever a time I needed it, it's now. I clicked the button on my helmet and I started to grow. I even gained more hearts. I was big enough to truly take him on now. This feels amazing. Now I really am the goat. I charged at the T-Rex and landed a hit on him, just as the sparking effects were wearing off. What the? How did you get so big? The T-Rex started to spawn in more dinosaurs, but it didn't matter. I quickly cut them down and kept hitting the T-Rex. This is for all the animals you hurt. I could tell I was really hurting him, but he was hurting me too. It was only a matter of time before one of us fell. Who was it going to be? Just then, I delivered the final blow, and the T-Rex disappeared, dropping his helmet. I don't believe it. He's gone. But I better hurry. Faraday needs this helmet. On day 100, I returned back to my base. This time, Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, you're back. You must have done it. I did, and I couldn't have done it without your help. Here, let me give you the helmet back. You know, why don't you hang on to it? I just need this one component. You never know. Something might come up again when I need your help in the future. You never know what's going to happen, but I'm glad that today was a success. In the meantime, I'll be here, ready for when adventure calls. On day one, I spawned in as a little mouse. Ooh, look how cute and tiny I am. But uh-oh, I only have one heart. I've got to be careful. That's when I noticed that my hunger bar was half the size of a normal one, too. Uh-oh, I guess I have a tiny stomach. I better hurry and start getting some supplies. Right away, I started punching trees so that I could get some wood. Using the wood I had collected, I put together a crafting table, then used that to make a wooden pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. I packed at my crafting table and started to look for some food. That's when my hunger bar started dropping. I had to hurry. I soon saw a patch of berries. Oh, thank goodness. This is just what I was looking for. Suddenly, I heard a growl and a giant grizzly bear came walking over. Oh, he's going to eat me. I gotta run. I ran and ran through the forest until I felt like I had gotten away. This forest was a dangerous place. Just then, I heard some squeaking up ahead. I soon saw a little mice family. Oh, hey, guys. You're just like me. Is it okay if we stick together? A new friend. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is easier when you stick together. My name is Remy. Remy introduced me to the rest of his family. It was nice to have a group of friendly faces. He told me that they had a nice cave to live in, too. We headed over to the cave when suddenly a fox popped out and started to attack us. Oh no, I have to help my new family. Together, we did everything we could to fight off the fox. Luckily for me, our combined power was strong, and we took the fox down. Yeah, you won't be messing with us again. We then all went into the cave. It was small, but cozy. The perfect place to settle for the night. I just hoped that tomorrow I could find some more food. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. On day two, I headed into the cave to get some coal. I was able to quickly find some and mined it out. I also grabbed some stone. Time for this mouse to get an upgrade. I put down my crafting table and used it to put together some stone tools. I also made some torches. I headed over to our cave and set up the torches. This should help keep the mobs away. My hunger was starting to drop again, so I decided to go out and look for some more food. As I ran through the forest, I could see something on the ground. But as I got closer, I could see it was just a flower. Man, where is all the food? I didn't have too much time to think about it, though, as the grizzly bear from before showed up again. Oh, this guy again? I can't risk it with one heart. I had stone tools, but there was no way I could take him on. I soon arrived back at the cave to talk to my mouse friends. Have you guys been able to find any food? Everywhere I look is either empty or has a hungry bear. Oh, you're not alone. We can't find anything either. But that's because of the humans. The humans? What do you mean? There's been a lot of humans coming through here, and they've been taking all of the food. It's been hard for us to find anything. I felt really bad for them, and they agreed to try and go look for food. I wanted to do something to make them happy, so I went outside and gathered up some of the materials. Using everything I had collected, I started to fix up the cave. We might not have any food, but at least we could have some beds to sleep in. It's the best I could do, but I just wanted to say thank you for letting me stay here. I'm really starting to feel like I'm part of your family. On day three, I woke up to a loud noise. There was a human in our cave. He had put my mouse family into bags, and I was next. Let them go. I had tried to hit him, but he nearly took me out. I had no choice but to run. You can run, but I'm gonna find you eventually. I kept running until the human was far behind me. What was I going to do now? How could this happen to my family? That guy was huge. But one day, I'm gonna be big and strong too. Mark my words. I'm gonna save my family from the humans. On day Days four to five, I set off to find myself a new place to live. If I was going to get big and strong, I needed a safe place to sleep at night and store my gear. I soon found myself a nice cliff side and dug into the side of it. I wanted something cozy like the last cave, but I was gonna make it a little nicer. Time to get some building supplies. I headed out into the forest and gathered wood, as well as all the other materials I was going to need. This was going to be a classy rat's nest. I then got to work building all of the rooms. I decided to build something even bigger than what I needed, including rooms for other mice. I was determined to save my mouse family, and they were going to need a room when they came to live with me. 
Soon, the base was completed, and I decided to get some rest. In the middle of the night, I heard some noise outside. Uh-oh, I forgot to put out torches. I gotta take care of these zombies. I got right to work, fighting off the zombies, but I had to be careful, because I still only had one heart. Luckily for me, I was able to survive and took them all out. I better get those torches up quick. The next day, I headed outside to take a look around the area. What is that over there? I went down into the forest and soon came upon a small, half-built structure. Inside was another mouse. Hey, you're just like me. Am I? Because I'm looking real buff while you're just a skinny little guy. I'm not a mouse. I'm a vole. What are you doing out here? My family was kidnapped by the humans, and I'm going to rescue them, but I'm worried about getting food first. Boy, are you right about that. How am I supposed to keep to my all-protein diet with those humans taking all the food? They also got my family, too. I think they're keeping them as pets. Oh, these humans are ruining everything. Let's team up and take them down. Yeah, let's do it. Two more voles had popped up from nearby. Whoa, where did you guys come from? I thought you were the only one. Oh, yeah. These are my brothers. They're around. What's up, little guy? You look like you could use a protein shake. Uh, thanks. Well, the more the merrier, I suppose. Come on, you guys should live at my base with me. Tomorrow we can figure out the food. The voles agreed, and we headed out. On day six to eight, I was wandering through the forest when I finally came across a berry bush. But it was empty. That's when I saw a raccoon taking off the last few berries. Oh, hey, would you mind sparing a few berries? I haven't eaten in days. Heh, <laughs> that's just how it works out here, bud. Do I have enough to spare? Yeah, I do. But I guess I'm just a jerk. Sorry, not sorry. I couldn't believe this guy. Well, you're right about one thing. You are a jerk. I had had enough. It was time to start fighting back. Give me those berries. I jumped into action and started fighting the raccoon. I caught him off guard. He didn't expect a little mouse like me to be this strong, I managed to beat him in no time. As he disappeared, he dropped a bunch of berries. Finally, some food! I took a bite of the berries when I suddenly felt my strength begin to grow, and I leveled up. I had gotten even stronger, and now I have four hearts. Awesome! With my belly more full than before, I decided to head into a cave. Lucky for me, I found a whole bunch of iron. By using my pickaxe, I managed to mine a whole bunch of iron, enough to make myself all kinds of iron equipment. As I headed back toward the base, I also came across some sugarcane. Even more food! Today is just my lucky day. I managed to collect a decent amount of sugarcane, when suddenly the grizzly bear appeared again. I'm not running away this time. I jumped into action, but it was a mistake. This bear was just way too strong. Okay, looks like I'm running away this time. Today was just not the day to beat a bear, but hey, at least I got some food. Back at the base, I started planting the sugar cane. If I could get some more ingredients, I'd have myself a nice food source. I can also use it to make books. I was hoping to build a library in the base. Once the sugar cane was all planted, I went back to my base and started smelting the iron ore I'd collected. With the iron ingots, I made myself a full set of iron armor, then made all of the tools I would need as well. I'm feeling much better already. Ready. I then decided to upgrade the base by adding in a library. I felt like the voles might like it. I just wanted to make sure they were comfortable and happy to be here. Hey guys, come check out the new library. The voles headed upstairs to take a look around. Reading is for nerds, but even I gotta admit, this is a pretty nice looking place. Good going, Pipsqueak. On days 9 to 10, I woke up to the voles coming into my room. Bro, we're starving. We gotta do something about this food situation. Good morning. I agree, but I feel like I've run out of places to look. There is this one place, but only someone small and sneaky could go there. Like you. I could give it a go. Where is it? There's a human farm near here, just full of stuff. If you can get in there and steal some of their food, we could start our own farm. That sounds a little risky, but at this point, I'm not sure what choice I have. I'll do it. The voles told me where I needed to go, and I went and waited outside for nighttime. Once it was good and dark, I snuck down and soon saw the farm. These humans have so much food. Why are they taking everything from the forest? I quickly gathered as much food as I could. We were finally going to have a reliable food source. Once I had grabbed a good amount of food, I noticed a chest nearby. Inside, was a box of hats. I wonder what this is all about. Just then I heard a bark and a dog came running over to me. Hey, why are you barking at me? Don't you know the humans are taking everyone's food? The dog stopped barking. They're taking everyone's food? He's my best friend, but that doesn't seem like a very nice thing to do. Suddenly I heard a shout and the farmer came running out. Hey you, get on out of here. I had no choice but to run away. Those humans were dangerous and I would never rescue my family if they captured me too. After a bit of running, I made it back to my base. I threw some potatoes into the furnace and started making some beetroot soup. I also bagged some bread. With all kinds of good food in my pockets, I headed over to the vole's room. I'm back, and look what I've got. I started tossing the food out, much to the vole's delight. We'd never have to be hungry again. After everyone had eaten, I showed them the hat box too. Everyone picked out their favorite hats and put them on. We were all pretty excited about it. The next day, I went outside and started working on a farm. Once it was all set up, I tilled the land and planted all the different plants. Finally, I could focus on my main mission of rescuing my family. On days 11 to 12, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again. But this time, they were 
weren't complaining. They were excited because they had something to show me. Apparently, it was a fancy statue. I went outside to take a look. So, what do you think? We all worked really hard on it. It's a mouse, just like you. Wow, guys, that is really nice. Thanks for making this for me. You know what could be really fun? What's that? Why don't we make one together? There's more than one of us here, so I think it just makes sense for there to be more than one statue. Yeah, that sounds dope, but we don't really want to build another one, so you can make it. We can't wait to see it. First off, I decided to go out and start collecting all the flowers I would need to make dye. I was going to find some sheep later, so I ran around getting everything I would need. Once I had gotten all the flowers I needed, I snuck back to the human's farm. I snuck upstairs and managed to grab some shears out of the chest. Then I went over to the sheep and dyed them all the different colors I would need. I had just collected a decent amount of wool when the farmer and dog came running out. Uh-oh, here they come again. I've got a bolt. The farmer shouted and the dog barked, but I was able to get out of there just in time. Back at the base, I got to work building the first part of the statue. It meant a lot to me that the voles had made me a statue, so I thought it'd be nice to make something too. I still needed some more supplies, so I stopped at the first part. On days 13 to 15, I was out exploring the woods when I came across a beehive. Oh, we could use some honey. This will be very helpful. I gathered it up and then saw another one, so I gathered the honey from there too. That's when I noticed a small house on top of the hill. A house that small must be for a mouse. I ran up the hill to find out. The door opened and inside was a feeble old mouse. Why, hello, dear. What brings you out to these parts? Hi, I'm out gathering some supplies for my friends. I've got to search pretty far for special items since the humans are taking all of our resources. Ah, those pesky humans. They're just the worst. It's high time the Mouse of Myth comes along. The Mouse of Myth? Who's that? Ah, oh, have you not heard the story? Legend says that when the humans begin to ruin the mouse lands, a brave and mighty mouse will rise up, growing to be even bigger and stronger than the humans. That mouse will save all mouse kind. Really? Wow, that actually sounds a lot like the situation I'm going through right now. Perhaps you are the Mouse of Myth then. Ever experienced sudden bursts of strength? once, but I think that was because I hadn't eaten in a few days. The Mouse of Myth sounds way stronger than me. Well, the Mouse of Myth will be confident in himself, so perhaps it's not you after all. Oh yeah, uh, maybe not. We chatted a while longer, but all I could think about was the Mouse of Myth. I hoped that could be me, but maybe she was right. I didn't feel confident in it at all. I soon left to go back to my base. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again. Yo, Zozo, you've been proven to be pretty tough after all, so we had a favor to ask. What's going on? Some of our buddies got themselves into a bit of a situation, and we were hoping you could bail them out. I'll see what I can do. Show me the way. I followed the voles out of the base and out across the land. They had soon led me into a dense jungle where we came across some squirrels stuck in a tree. There was a Tasmanian devil down at the bottom, and he wasn't letting them down. Out of the way, mister. I charged at the Tasmanian devil, and we started to fight. Why won't you leave those poor squirrels alone? The voles cheered me on as we continued to fight. This little guy was intense, but I was quick and took him out in no time. Bro, nice one. The vole called up to his squirrel friends to let them know it was safe, and they came down to chat. Yo, that was sick. We thought we were never gonna get out of that tree. No worries, guys. I'm just glad we could help. Say, if you want, you should come live at our base with us. There's a lot of dangerous creatures out here. Gnarly, bruh. We'd love to live there with you guys. Just then, I felt strength coming to me, and I grew in size, and I've gained even more hearts than before. Dude, nice gains. I didn't know a mouse could beef up like that. Soon we all left and headed back to the base. I had grown in size again. Maybe I could be the mouse of myth. I'd have to figure that out another day. Back at the base, I got right to work building the squirrels a place to live. I started with some steps and a ladder, then got to work making them a tree house. I figured they would be happiest living in a tree, so I made it the best I could. Then I filled the inside with all the comforts they could need. Soon, I was done. I really hope they like it here. On days 20 to 22, I got woken up again, but this time, it wasn't by the voles. What is that sound? I ran outside and saw the base was surrounded by zombies. But where had all of the torches gone? I couldn't worry about that now, though. I had some zombies to take care of. I ran down the hill and quickly attacked them. They weren't super tough, so I was able to defeat them quickly. All right, I gotta figure out what happened. But just then, another group of zombies came over the hill. More of them? Oh, brother. I started swinging my sword and was able to take a few more of them out. But how many more were there going to be? I don't know if I can fight them off forever. It was close, but I managed to finish them off. Okay, enough of that. I better get more torches. But then, even more zombies came over the hill, and this time, they were covered in iron armor. What is going on? I kept swinging my sword and was getting hits in, but these guys were way tougher with their armor. It was starting to look a little close, but I finally fought them all off. Oh, I can't fight anymore. Hopefully that's it. But it wasn't it. More iron-wearing zombies came over the hill, and this time, they had skeletons with them. Uh-oh, I don't think I can survive this. I started to fight them off, but it was too hard. I ran under the statue for cover, but 
but I was surrounded. Just then, the voles came charging out of the base and attacked the zombies. Hang on, Zozo, we're here to help. With our combined power, we were able to start fighting back and start taking out the bad guys. Even the squirrels got into the fight. At long last, the zombies were finally defeated. This time, no more zombies or skeletons came over the hill. Soon, we were back in the base. Thanks, guys. I thought I was a goner. We thought we ought to help you out for once. I'm sure glad you did. We've got to figure out what happened to our torches, though. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble. Oh, right. We might know something about that. The voles explained that they had taken all of the torches and put them in the library. Apparently, it was too dark for them to see what they were reading. It turns out, reading is actually pretty dope, but we didn't think about the zombies. My bad, homie. I told them it was okay, and got to work setting up some new torches outside. We'll have to try and make even better defenses tomorrow. On days 23 to 26, I left my base to go and gather some more supplies. Our base had nearly been taken over last night, and we needed some serious upgrades. First, I dug up a bunch of clay. I was going to make bricks, so I needed to grab as much clay as I could. I then brought it back to my base, where I began smelting it into bricks. Before I started working on the wall, though, I decided to build a nice walkway down to the farm. It was going to be much better better than having to get wet every time we needed to get a bite to eat. With the new bridge complete, I then got to work on the new walls. There were some natural mountains around the entrance to our base, but I thought it'd be smart to plug up the gaps with some walls. After all, a wall is no good if someone can just walk right through it. Once the walls are finished, my next project was building a guard tower. If we had something nice and tall, we'd be able to keep a close eye out for any more zombies, or even worse, humans. It took a bit, but the tower was soon complete too. As I was admiring the build from the courtyard, one of the squirrels came outside to meet me. Hey man, nice building. You're really good at this. Thanks. I just want us to be as safe as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm actually a pretty good cook. If you wouldn't mind building me a kitchen, I'd be happy to make food for everyone. Oh, that's a great idea. Before I started on the kitchen, though, I first grabbed some food from the farm. There was no point in building a kitchen if there's no food to store in it. With all the food in my pockets, I headed inside and got to work on the kitchen. I made sure to set up everything he needed and filled the pantry with all of the food. I couldn't wait to see what he'd make. Later that night, I was up in the tower to see how well our defenses worked. I could see a big group of zombies outside of the gate, but they had no chance of getting in. I'd call that a success. Now I just had to hope nothing bigger would stop by. On days 27 to 31, I was keeping watch from the tower when the bear from earlier showed up. This guy again? I'm so sick of him, always trying to ruin my day. I ran down and headed outside the gate. You've tried to take my food too many times. I'm not letting you in here. The bear just laughed and let out a roar. He wasn't much of the talking type, but he was still a jerk. Just then, he charged. The bear was still really strong, but this time, I wasn't going to run away or back down. I was stronger, and he was going to have the fight of his life. With my sword in hand, I swung as hard as I could, knocking him back. He let out a roar, but it was too late. I hit him with the final blow, and he was defeated. Well, aren't you just the toughest little mouse I've ever seen? I looked up at a nearby tree and saw a crane looking down at me. Oh man, you have no idea. That bear has been trying to finish me off for days. I just couldn't let him win. Well, it's not every day you see a mouse beating a bear. Have you ever considered joining a fighting league? All of the toughest animals around are in ours, and you'd be perfect. Oh, I appreciate the offer, but I can't. I'm on a quest to save my family, not become the ultimate mouse champion. Oh, but you don't understand. This will help you. By showing your bravery, you can inspire the crowd who want to help in your cause. Not to mention, you can earn some serious money by winning fights. Money that could help you. Uh, okay. I guess there's no harm in checking it out. Where do I need to go? The crane told me where to go, and I said I would head over there after preparing a little bit. He thanked me and took off. Later that day, I was deep in a cave, looking for resources. If I was going to win any fights, I needed the best gear I could get. That's when I noticed there were tons of diamonds in this cave. I mined out as many as I could. This was just what I needed. With my pockets overflowing with diamonds, I headed out of the cave. Back at the base, I got right to crafting, making myself a full set of diamond armor, a helmet, boots, leggings, and a chest plate. I then used them to make a pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. There's no way I'm going to lose any fights now. On days 32 to 35, I made my way to the location the crane had told me about. Standing outside the entrance was the crane. Good evening, sir. I'm so thrilled you could make it. You've got quite the challenger tonight, but I think you will do splendidly. Okay, I'm all ready to fight, so bring it on. The crane motioned for me to enter, and I headed in. The arena was brightly lit, or at least the fighting area was. I could hear a crowd in the darkness, though, so I knew the place was packed. As I stood in the arena, I saw a gate open at the other end. It looked like my challenger was a Shiba Inu. I could take this guy. A bell rang and the fight was on. The Shiba was tough, but so was I. As we fought, the crowd cheered. As we both landed blows, they oohed and awed. They seemed like they were really into it. If I can win this fight, all the animals watching will be able to help me rescue my family. I've got to win. The Shiba Inu put up a good fight, but with my new weapons and armor, there was really no contest. I soon defeated him, and the crowd went wild. As they cheered, a bunch of emeralds started dropping into the arena, as well as XP points. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these emeralds, but I'm sure I can figure something out. This is awesome. Just then, a bunch of lapis and obsidian dropped in as well. Excited, I ran around picking up my rewards as the crowd continued to cheer. I gave one final wave to the crowd, then headed back down and out of the arena to meet with the crane. Congratulations. I just knew you could win. Thanks. That was actually a lot of fun. I think all the 
animals were really excited for me too. Oh yes, the crowd loved you. Please, feel free to come back soon. I'm sure the crowd was very inspired by you. I thanked the crane for inviting me and ran back toward my base. I made a stop by the sheep farm first though and grabbed a bunch of dyed wool. I was going to need this for the statue. Back at the base, I took the wool I had collected and got to work on the next part. I kept going until I ran out of wool again. I couldn't wait to see what it would look like when I was done. On days 36 to 39, I was exploring a nearby acacia forest when I saw something strange in the distance. Is that a mouse? She's really beating that wolf up. The mouse soon defeated the wolf and I hurried over to talk to her. Whoa, nice moves. That was super impressive. Thanks. I thought I was the only big strong mouse out here, but I see I'm not the only one. My name is Bella. My name's Zozo. There's actually a whole group of us living just back over the mountains. You should come live at our base with us. Are you sure? I don't want to intrude. Oh no, it would be great. We could train together and everything. I feel like I could learn a lot from you. Well, all right. Show me the way. We headed off back in the direction of the base. Once we arrived, I got right to work making her room. It was going to be awesome having such a tough mouse around. Soon, her room was complete. On days 40 to 43, I met Bella in the kitchen. Hey Zozo, I'm going to go out and train. Do you want to come with? That would be awesome. You can teach me all of your moves. Right on. Just give me a second. Bella went over to the crafting table and made herself a new purple hat. It was really cool. She was then ready to go, so we headed out. Back in the acacia forest, I watched as Bella took on a whole pack of wolves. I couldn't believe she wasn't even scared. The wolves were fighting their hardest, but Bella wasn't even breaking a sweat. Soon, she had defeated all of the wolves. Zozo, why don't you hop in on this next one? Another pack of wolves charged at us, and I hopped in. I've got a for you. Instead of just hitting, jump into the air and hit them as you're coming down. You'll do even more damage than normal. I gave it a try and she was right. I tried it on as many wolves as I could and together we defeated them all no problem. Later we were taking a break when I had a question to ask her. So how come you train so hard? What makes you want to fight so much? That's a good question. I wasn't always like this, but one day I met an old mouse woman in the middle of nowhere. She told me this story about a mouse who could grow in size and was really strong. I had been fighting mobs just before then and had grown in size a little myself. That was when I realized I had to be the one in the legend. I had to be the mouse of myth. Really? I think I met the same mouse. I heard the exact same story. I couldn't believe that I might be the mouse of myth though. Well, that makes sense though, because you're not. I knew without a doubt the legend was about me. And so I've dedicated myself to training in order to fulfill my destiny. You really thought you were the mouse of myth? <laughs> That's cute. Come on, I'll race you back to the base. Bella took off, but I couldn't help feeling a little disappointed. I mean, she was really talented, so it did make sense, but I was really starting to believe I might be the mouse of myth. We'd just have to see how everything played out. On days 44 to 49, I decided to get some more work done on the statue. I had collected a decent amount of materials for my last raid, so I got quite a bit done. I was even able to do the tail, which I thought turned out pretty good. I was taking a moment to look at how things had gone so far when the voles came running out. Zozo, come quick. There's a human at the gate, and he's asking for you. A human? You guys keep an eye out from above. This could mean trouble. I ran over to the gates, and sure enough, there was a human on the other side. But this human was dressed like a mailman. What do you want, human? Don't you worry, little rat. I'm not here to cause you any trouble. Yet. I'm here with a message from all of us humans. What could you thugs have to say to me? We wrote it all down, but watch out. We know about your little base out here. We've seen you and your friends training too. We could destroy all of you if we wanted to, but we'll let it slide on one condition. Yeah? And what's that? Stop messing with our farms and stealing from us. Otherwise, you and all your little rodents can say goodbye. Okay, I'll agree to that on one condition. You let my mouse family and all other animals go. <laughs> they didn't tell me you had a sense of humor, but seriously, knock it off or we'll knock you out. The human turned and walked off. Who do these humans think they are? It's time to teach them a real lesson. On days 50 to 53, Bella and I snuck up to the sheep farm I had been visiting. But this time, I saw they had built a huge wall around it. Looks like we inspired them to up their security, but I think I know how to beat that. Bella pulled out her shovel. Shovel? Shovel. Bella and I got right to work building a tunnel. I had been here enough times to know just where I needed to go to pop out under the sheep pen. We tunneled our way through and popped up right underneath them. Holy sheep, where did you two come from? Oh, I didn't know you guys could talk. Uh, sorry for dyeing you different colors and stealing your wool. Are you serious? You're the only one who has been cutting our wool, and it's hot out here. You're doing us a favor. Oh, well that's great to hear. You guys wouldn't happen to want to live at my base, would you? We thought you'd never ask. The humans are the worst. We all jumped into the tunnel and ran back out from under the wall. This was going to make the humans so mad. It was perfect. Back at the base, I got right to work building the sheep a nice farmhouse to live in. They didn't even have a roof over their heads before. This was going to be much better. Now we just needed to sit back and see how the humans would react. On days 54 to 57, I was down in the mines gathering some more materials. The humans would probably want to attack me at some point, so I needed to make some upgrades. Once I had collected everything I needed in the mines, I headed upstairs and went over to the crafting table. Using the obsidian I had gotten from the arena, I managed to put together an enchanting table. Time to really upgrade my gear. I went into the library and cleared out a space for the enchanting table. I surrounded the room with bookshelves and placed the table at the center of the room. Then I went through all of my gear and gave them different enchantments to make them stronger. I'm gonna be one tough mouse to beat now. I then went outside and got to work 
on the next part of the statue. This time it was all about the details, starting with a torch in its left hand. Then I got to work on a sword for the right hand. This was my favorite part of the build for sure. This statue is looking great. On days 58 to 62, I decided to make some more improvements to the base, starting with the bridge. I took down some of what I had done before, then began adding in some new railings and overhangs. As a final touch, I added in some hanging lanterns. Speaking of lanterns, I thought they looked quite a bit nicer than torches, so I went around the base and replaced all the torches with lanterns. I also added a doorbell. The least any invading human can do is ring the bell first. I then headed inside and cleared out a wall and added a window. Inside, I put some cushions and bookshelves to make a sitting room. The voles were really getting into their books, so I thought they'd enjoy the space. Later that evening, I was lounging in the sitting room with Bella. I've just got to tell you, Zozo, you're a really great friend. To me, the Voles, everyone you meet. And plus, this base looks amazing. Thanks, Bella. That means a lot coming from you. On day 63 to 66, I heard someone ringing the doorbell and went out to take a look. Perched outside was the crane. Good morning, sir. It would seem your next challenger is ready. He'll be even tougher than before, but the crowd has been begging to see you in action again. I think you really made an impression on them. Okay, great. I'll be there. Later on, I was back at the arena. The gate opened and I stepped into the ring. The crowd was still in darkness, but they sounded excited to see me. Across the arena, I saw a honey badger had stepped in to face me. We squared off, and as soon as the bell was rung, we leapt into action. The crane was right. This honey badger was way stronger than my last fight, and his claws were really hurting. Sorry, but I've got a family to fight for. I thought about everything Bella had told me about and tried to put it into action. Once I started landing the more powerful blows, I could tell it was only a matter of time. Soon, the badger was defeated. The crowd went wild. I did it! Like before, emeralds started to drop from the ceiling, followed by some lapis, netherite ingots, and health potions. There was also a mythical potion, which said it could only be used by a mythical hero. Huh, I wonder what this is about. It's supposed to taste like bananas, too. I bet a monkey of legend would be into this. Just then, I noticed there were two small honey badgers crying on the other side of one of the gates. Hey, uh, that wasn't your dad, was it? No, our real dad was taken away by humans long ago, but that badger you just fought had agreed to take us in. He just needed to win the fight to get the resources to take care of us. Oh wow, I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea he was also fighting for her family. It's okay, he knew the risks. We know that you're just trying to rescue your family from the humans too. We're just tired of them ruining all of our lives. You know what? Why don't you two come live in my base with me? There's all kinds of animals there who would love to be your family. Wow, that would be amazing. The two little badgers followed me back to our base. They were excited to finally have a place to call home. I went ahead and dug out a room for them to stay too. Who knows how long these two little guys had been looking for a home. On day 67 to 70, I headed out of the base. Things were really starting to come along. Where is everyone? I walked out and saw the voles were outside harvesting some wheat, but Bella was out there giving them commands. What is she doing? I headed down to talk to her. Hey, what are you doing? Telling everyone what to do. Oh, hey, Zozo. I figured that since I was the mouse of myth, I should probably be the one calling the shots around here. I don't really know why you keep saying you're the mouse of myth. There's not really any proof. For all you know, it's me. Oh, yeah? Well, if you were the mouse of myth, you'd already have the Frost Slayer sword. The what? Yeah, see? You don't even know what it is. Part of the legend is that the mouse of myth is able to get it from the great northern tundra. Well, you don't have it either. In fact, I'm going to get it right now. Oh, yeah? Not if I get it first. Bella and I took off for the great northern tundra. I would show her. We soon arrived, and boy, was it cold. We were both so worried about getting there first, we ran right into a pack of polar bears. Uh-oh. We both fought hard to stay alive, but it was clear we couldn't fight them off fighting on our own. We changed our strategy and saw that by working together, we were able to take them all out. Ah, oh, Bella, what are we doing? We're going to get ourselves into some serious trouble if we don't work together. You're right. We're being really hasty. How about this? We both work together to get the sword. Once we get there, we can just see who the sword chooses. It's not really up to us who the Mouse of Myth is, anyway. Exactly. All right, let's go get that sword. On day 71 to 74, Bella and I continued deeper into the tundra. As we traveled through the ice spikes, we soon came across a dungeon. This must be the place. No matter what happens, we'll still be friends. Deal? Deal. Bella and I ran down the stairs and into the dungeon. It's full of water. How are we going to get through? Just then, we noticed some levers at the top of the stairs. These must control the platforms down there. Here, you go down and I'll work these levers. I ran down by the water as Bella started flipping switches. After hitting the first one, a platform came out of the wall. I jumped over to it. Bella continued hitting the switches and more platforms came out of the wall. I had some close calls jumping between them, but eventually I made it to the next passageway. Hang on a second. There's a lever in here. Let me hit it and see what it does. I flipped the switch and a shortcut opened up for Bella. She hopped down. Nice hopping. Let's see what else is in here. We kept going down the hallway when suddenly a bunch of poison snowballs came flying out of the wall, hitting us. Ouch, those really hurt. There was a small passageway, so we ducked through there to heal up. Zozo, I have to be honest with you. What is it? I know I'm really confident all the time, but the truth is, I'm not sure if I'm actually the mouse of myth. The old mouse woman had just told me a story so specific, I felt like it had to be me. Yeah, it was the same thing for me. But you know what we haven't considered yet? What's that? Maybe she was just making the whole thing up to trick mice like us to take 
take on the humans. You know what? You're probably right. As if we didn't have enough reason to want to fight them. I guess we'll find out soon enough anyway. I agreed. That's when I noticed something odd about the box we were next to. Hey, is there something in this? We looked inside and saw there was a fancy new helmet inside. My diamond helmet was still in good shape, so I let Bella take it. We decided to keep pushing on and ran out into the snowballs. We took some hits, but made it through. We soon entered a big room that was full of bad guys. We sprang into action, fighting them off. Some of them cast magic spells that dropped explosive ice blocks on us. They were really tough, but nothing could break the power of our friendship. We quickly cleared the room. I think this might be the last room up ahead. Let's finish this together. On day 75 to 78, we stepped into a large room where a snow troll was standing in the center of the room. But look what he was standing in front of. The frost lair. I can see it. Let's get that troll out of our way. Bella and I sprinted in, swinging our weapons as hard as we could. This guy was unbelievably strong. His blows did a lot of damage, and no matter how hard we hit him, it seemed like he wasn't even hurt. This guy is crazy. I don't know if we can beat him. Our health was dropping fast, too. Maybe neither of us was the mouse of myth, and it was all going to end here. But just then, I had an idea. Bella, follow my lead. Hey, don't. Dum -dum, over here! We took off running, and he followed us over by one of the support pillars. He swung his stone column at me, but I jumped out of the way, causing him to hit the support pillar. There was a crack, and suddenly, the whole pillar fell over, smashing the troll. Zozo, that was brilliant. Go on, you can grab the sword first. I stepped up and took hold of the sword. Suddenly, nothing happened. It was just a normal sword. There's nothing special about this sword. Here, I tossed the sword over to Bella, who picked it up. You're right. This is just like holding any other sword. That legend must not be true. Otherwise, only one of us could have held this. True, or maybe it's just about anyone. No one is born the Mouse of Myth. You become it by trying. Suddenly, there was a rumbling sound, and the roof started to cave in. Without the support column, we were all in danger. We ran as fast as we could and made it out of the room, just in time. On day 79 to 84, we had made it back to the base and settled back in for the night. The next day, I had a lot of work to do. I started by doubling the size of our farm so everyone would have plenty to eat. Then I got busy putting in a path around it. This was going to be much easier to navigate. Then I went over and put together an archery range for the squirrels. They had been really helpful when the zombies had attacked, so I wanted to give them an even better training ground. Nice shooting, guys. If humans show up here, they aren't going to know what hit them. The Volts had also mentioned to me how they were reading all about gardening and wanted to try their hand at maintaining a garden. So I put in a small garden for them to manage as well. Yeah, we better get the pruners out. These roses are already looking a little wild. And keep a close eye on those poppies. I'd hate to see them fall to the weeds. With so many animals around, the outdoors were starting to get a little untidy, so I made a small storage shack for us to stash all of our odds and ends. Part of these improvements was also getting a better space for us to improve our weapons and armor, so I built a smithy area for us to do everything we needed to do. I thought it turned out pretty nice. With the new smithy, I took some time to fix up all of my diamond gear, as Bella fired up the blast furnace to make improvements to her equipment, too. Then I headed inside to the smithing table, where I used all of the netherite I had one in the arena to upgrade my diamond gear to netherite. Then I brought the new gear over to the enchanting table where I enchanted all of my netherite equipment. I'm going to be one unstoppable mouse now. And finally, our last project was upgrading our walls, which the voles offered to help with. At this point, our humble little rat base was becoming a full-on castle. We gave the walls major upgrades and even built a large tower. On days 85 to 89, the vole came running into my room with a warning. Zozo, the humans are outside the walls. Come quickly. I hurried and ran to the walls and could see a small army of humans were preparing to charge, but the squirrels were in position and ready to fire. Hold steady, guys. Here they come. The humans began to charge as the squirrels unleashed their arrows. Their training had paid off, and they were deadly shots. Several humans fell as they ran toward the base. It's working. The humans had lost many of their soldiers and started to run away. Yeah, nice job, everyone. They aren't tough at all. What I didn't realize was that this was just a decoy. A powerful warrior had scaled the mountain behind us and jumped into our base. What was that? I turned and saw a warrior standing in the courtyard. He said nothing as he stared up at me. Charge! I leapt into action, swinging my sword. But if there was anything I had learned, it was that friends are stronger together. Bella came running out of the base, followed by the voles. The squirrels started shooting arrows down as well. Even with our combined power, though, it was quite the fight. Keep going, everyone. We can defeat this guy. The warrior was strong, and his armor was hard to crack. Eventually, we managed to knock him over the cliff as he landed in the water. We kept on him, and I swung my new frost slayer sword with all my might. At long last, he was finally defeated. We did it. The humans will never take our land, and they certainly won't take our freedom. Suddenly, I felt strength coming into me, and I leveled up, gaining eight more hearts. We will never be conquered. On days 90 to 94, I ran into Bella in the lobby, but she looked really sad. Bella, what's wrong? I thought you'd be excited after our successful fight. I am excited about our win, but I'm just really down about this Mouse of Myth stuff. I mean, I dedicated my entire life believing I was fulfilling my destiny, but it's looking more like it was all a lie. You know what? I think we should go talk to that old mouse woman. Even if it's all a lie, you can at least be at peace knowing the truth. Bella agreed and we headed out. We soon arrived back at the old woman's house. I told Bella to stay back while I knocked on the door. As the old woman came out, she was excited to see me. Oh, look who it is. Could it be our very own Mouse of Myth? Cut it, lady. We came here to find out the truth. We? 
Just then, Bella jumped up, which caught the old woman by surprise. Wee! Why did you tell both of us the same legend? Is there a mouse of myth or not? Oh, uh, I, yes. Er, no. I, uh, okay, okay. The truth. The truth is that I made it all up. Why would you do that? That lie nearly destroyed our friendship. Oh, I'm sorry. I never would have wanted that. The humans have been messing with mice for decades, and no one ever seemed brave enough to stand up to them. I just thought if I made up a story, I might be able to inspire someone to actually do it. They took my family years ago, and I've always wanted revenge. Well, I suppose there are worse things to lie about. We do want to teach them a lesson, and are actually strong enough to do something about it after all. Bella agreed and we had a nice chat with the old woman about her family. She sounded lonely living out here, so I invited her to stay at the base with us. She agreed, but on one condition. We had to rebuild her house exactly the same. I took some time to take down her house so that we'd have all the right pieces. Then later, back at the base, I reconstructed it so it would be exactly how it was before. She was delighted to have a familiar but safe place to stay. On days 95 to 97, I walked out of the base to see the crane waiting for me. Oh, good morning again, sir. I know you've got your hands full, but your next challenger is ready for you. The crowd has said that they wish to see you fight once more. I'm sure they will make it worth your while. Well, one more round of upgrades before we fight the humans would be nice. Okay, I'll do it. The crane nodded before flying up and away. Later that day, I arrived back at the arena entrance, ready for my fight. I entered in and headed back into the arena. As the gate opened on the other side, I was shocked to see who it was. Bella, what are you doing here? It's okay, Zozo. We don't have to fight to the death. I've been doing these fights too so that I can train. Come on, it'll be a fun training exercise. We can see who is actually the strongest. Well, alright. I don't know if the crowd will like it, but obviously I don't want either of us to be eliminated. Of course not. Bring it on. Bella and I charged at each other. We weren't planning on taking each other out, but neither of us were holding back. The crowd was going absolutely crazy. Bella, is this too much? Maybe we should stop. No, listen to them. They're loving it. We've got to give them a good show if we want them to still pay out at the end. It didn't feel right to me, but we kept fighting on. Bella was such an amazing fighter, but she had taught me all of her moves. I landed a really hard hit, and Bella backed off. Oh, okay. I think we need to stop there. Nice hit, Zozo. Yeah, of course. You really had me on the ropes. Once the crowd realized what was happening, they started to boo. I could hear the crane's voice coming from the stands. Zozo, what are you waiting for? Finish her off. What? No, she's my friend. Fine, but people came here expecting a finale, and I'm going to give it to them. Just then, the crane dropped in from the darkness, finishing off Bella. What have you done? The animals watching are going to support me against you. <laughs> you mean these animals? I looked at the balcony and saw that the crowd had stepped closer, revealing themselves to be humans. I couldn't believe the crane had been working for them this whole time. I could feel my blood beginning to boil, and in my rage, I grew into a large, ferocious rat. You're gonna pay for that. I charged at the crane, hitting him again and again, defeating him in no time. I could hear the humans laughing as one of them shouted for the guards. The gate opened and a bunch of human guards came running in. Get out of my way. The guards thought they could stop my rampage, but I was way too angry. I swung my sword with all my might and quickly took them all out. I could tell the humans watching were starting to get nervous. Don't think that you're getting away either. With my new strength, I jumped from the arena into the balcony and started to attack. They didn't realize who they were messing with. I managed to take several of them out as they tried to run away. Enough is enough. I've got to end this. I jumped back into the arena and ran out of the building. On day 98, I had made it back to my base and my rage had turned to sadness. I couldn't believe Bella was gone. As I looked at the statue, I wanted to do something nice to remember her. Atop the mouse statue, I took some time to add the same hat that Bella had worn when we first met. She had always said it was one of her favorites. That night, I was looking at the statue when suddenly Bella appeared in front of me. Zozo, thank you for dedicating the statue to me. I want you to know that everything is okay. But it was never supposed to be like this. We were supposed to take down the humans together. I know, but the truth is, I don't think you need me. I spent a lot of time thinking about the Mouse of Myth. The old woman may have made it up, and in doing so, she also made it come true. You have become the Mouse of Myth, and I'm so proud to have been your friend. I shed a tear and thanked her for everything she had taught me. I felt like it was finally time to fulfill my destiny. It was time to save my family and the world. On day 99, I met with all of my friends in our base. Okay, guys, it's time. If any of you want to stay behind, you can't. No one will hold it against you. No one said a word. They were ready to fight. Very well. Get geared up. We attack at nightfall. Before leaving, I ran over to the chest and grabbed the mythical potion, as well as the health potions I had gotten earlier. The team regrouped in the lobby, and we headed out for the human's base. On my way out, I paused to look at the mouse statue. I could feel Bella was with us. We soon reached the gates to the human's town, but how are we going to get in? Don't worry, guys. I know just what to do. The vault slipped through a small hole in the side of the guard tower, popping out inside of the base. He ran over to the lever and flipped it, letting us all in. Nice going! Let's get him! We stormed into the base, running into a couple of humans. All together, we took them out with ease. Off in the distance, I could see the farmer. This time, he was geared up to fight. There they are, Bosco. Take him out. Bosco? Bosco attacked his owner, taking him out. Then he ran over to us. You've had me thinking more than I have in my whole life. These humans have been so mean to other animals, and I can't be part of it. I'm here to help. 
With Bosco now on our team, we charged into the streets. There were several humans geared up to fight, but they weren't ready for us. We all unleashed our attacks, knocking them out of our way. Keep going, guys. We're doing great. We kept fighting through the streets and soon came upon a mansion in the middle of town. This had to be where my family was being kept. We charged the doors and quickly took out the guards. But how are we going to get in? Hang on, folks. I'll get us in there somehow. The vole started sniffing around and soon found another hole on the side of the building. He crawled through, dropping into a library maze. Good thing I got into reading. I just have to follow the titles back to A, and then I'll be back at the front. Using the authors as his guide, the vole wove through the maze until he noticed a hole. Nice, a shortcut. He popped out and flipped the switch, letting us all inside. Just then, there was a sound in the town, and we could see the whole army was coming for us. Quick, Zozo, go. We can hold them off. Yeah, man, your family needs you. You guys are the best. I will see you soon. I ran into the basement as the rest of my friends stayed back. As I entered the basement, I could see it was filled with animals, including my mouse family. Remy, it's me. We've got to get you guys out of here. Zozo, I can't believe it. Look how big and strong you are. Just then, I heard the gate slam and hurried back up the stairs. Well, 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 if it isn't the rat that got away, I should have captured you when I had the chance. You, you are just the worst. No monologues. I jumped into action, swinging my sword. Sword. Where had all my friends gone? Did he hurt them? I didn't have too long to think about it though, as he was really starting to hurt me. My health was dropping, and so my only option was to run away and heal up. What's wrong? Too afraid to fight? I had just gotten my health restored when the human caught up to me. I was going to keep you as a pet, but something like you is too powerful to be kept alive. We kept fighting, but I was starting to lose hope. He was too strong. I hurried and ran up the stairs to the roof to heal some more, hiding around the corner. Come out, come out, little mousy. I just want to talk. This human had been the cause of so many problems. He had destroyed and captured so many of my friends. He was going to pay. I took out the mythical potion. If I'm truly the mouse of myth, this will help me. I drank the potion down and felt a powerful surge of energy. I gained more hearts and felt even stronger than before. It had worked. It was time to end this. What the? How can a little rat become so powerful? What is this? This is what happens when you mess with a guy's friends, his family, his world. The human had backed up against the edge. No, okay, okay, surely we can work some Something out. Nope, it's over. I lunged forward and knocked him off the roof, sending him falling to the ground below. He's gone, but where are my friends? On day 100, I heard a shout as all of my friends came running over the bridge. It turned out they had pushed the soldiers all the way back into the town and defeated them. I made my way back into the dungeon and finally released my family along with all the other animals. We laughed and we cried. It had been too long. Back at the base, everyone celebrated. Even all the way from Mousy Heaven, I felt like I could hear Bella jumping for joy. Our fight was finally over.